Good morning and welcome to our weekly webcast. If this is the first time you're joining us, welcome. If you've been with us before, welcome back. And so the way the call works is it's three hours long and you can ask me anything. This is an AMA like Reddit, ask me anything. Uh, you can ask me business questions, career questions, personal questions. Uh, and uh, if I don't answer your question properly, please put me on the spot because I wanna humbly help as much as I possibly can. Now. I answer the questions in the order in which uh, I receive them. So if I miss your question, just post it again. Uh, so without further ado, let's begin. And, and thanks, everybody. Okay. Uh, Rohit is saying, good morning, Chris. Uh, hope all is well. Likewise, hope you're doing well. Um, in Asian and South Asian culture, failure is considered shameful. Do you know any mental frameworks about how to be more resilient and not be crestfallen after a failure? In Rocky Balboa's terms, how to get up after being hit hard. It ain't about, and you wrote here, it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard, how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. Yeah, no, I, I, I totally understand. Um, so I, I think the most important thing when it comes to entrepreneurship and being extraordinarily successful in business is understanding that every successful person in business has failed more times than you and I have combined. And one of the reasons they're successful is because they have a very positive attitude. And more importantly, they don't give a damn what people think of them. And for them, failure is not shameful. Failure just means a little stepping stone to greatness. And, um, you know, it, it was uh, Michael Jordan. I've got this great poster in my office. Uh, Michael Jordan said, um, I failed over and over and over again. And that's why I succeed. And I believe that. And it, it was also uh, Mark Cuban uh, who said, you only have to be right in business one time. So the best thing we can do is just stay upbeat, ignore the naysayers, because as Dr. Seuss said, those who mind don't matter. And no, those who mind don't matter and those who matter don't mind. Just don't give a damn what people think. And a lot of great uh, entrepreneurs, they've lived their life at a certain level where they just don't give a damn what anybody thinks. And I'll show you what this means. So, and this is just my daily schedule for my MBA students, but on, on, I'll do it this way. On the X, here's a chart. On the X axis here is your age. And on the Y axis here is give a damn, okay? And when you're younger and you're down here, you're a kid, you don't give a damn what people think of you. You, you just don't. You know, you have, you have meltdowns at restaurants like, like I used to years ago. My dad told me I did. Then when you're older up here, you don't give a damn either. The problem is when you're in your 20s or 30s, and sometimes even later than that, you're up here. You care what people think. And I call that the triangle of despair. And we need to eliminate that from our lives uh, completely. Okay. Now, entrepreneurs always live at this level, at least the successful ones. They just don't care what people think of them. They never have. And that's why they're successful. And quite often, a lot of very successful people in, in business especially in the tech industry, it's interesting. They have no sense of style. They don't dress that well. Their hair is all over the place and they just don't care. Like Steve Jobs used to come to work at Atari or Activision way before he found an Apple. Um, he'd show up and he didn't shower for many days. I'm not saying don't shower, but he just didn't care. He didn't care. And, and Mark Benioff as well, the, the brilliant humanitarian and founder of Salesforce.com, the biggest employer here in the Bay Area in San Francisco. I remember years ago, I worked in the same building, building as he did uh, at One Market Plaza uh, in, in San Francisco. And I remember in the, the public lobby, seeing him walking his beautiful Labrador, his dog, in bare feet. He, he doesn't care. I mean, he's a great person, but... The, the people that are successful just don't give a damn what people think of them. And, and that's how they got to be where, where they are. And, and there's a, a wonderful movie that, that, that I want you all to watch. And, it, and it's called uh, Tucker. Wrong camera, sorry. Right here. Tucker, uh, A Man and His Dreams. And it, it's about this guy who... Jeff Bridges stars in it. He's brilliant. It's about this guy who... He, he, he starts this company making tanks, and it's in the 1930s. And then uh, he has a big contract with the Dutch. And then by World War II, the, the Dutch canceled that contract. And so he was down and out and didn't know what the hell to do. And so he started a car company, 
he re-engineered the tanks. And he made this unbelievable product, this incredible car. And, and if, you, if you haven't had the chance yet to watch uh, the, the movie Tucker um, by, by Francis Ford Coppola, uh, I, I want you to do so because Jeff Bridges gives an impeccable performance and shows how uh, in the face of adversity, you know, he, he, he outperforms and creates this incredible company. And he has a positive attitude uh, along the way as well. So uh, check it out if you can, please. Um, but he just doesn't care what, what people think either. Um, and and I, I don't care either what people think of me. Um, you know, I, I'm not saying I'm rude or, or disingenuous, but I, I just, I do what I want to do. You know, a lot of people say, Chris, you're crazy. When are you going back to venture capital? Or when are you going back to the hedge fund industry? And I say, well, never. I just, I just want to teach. I just want to be me. And I don't care what anybody thinks because this is my passion. And Mark Twain had this great quote, which I have behind me on the wall there. He said, the two most important days in your life are number one, the day you're born, and number two, the day you find out why. What's your why? What are you passionate about? What gets you out of bed in the morning? What would you do if you weren't allowed to go to work and you weren't allowed to go to school and you had to stay home and you couldn't travel? Whatever that is, whatever you'd love to do, that's your passion, that's your calling, and you should go after it no matter what anybody tells you. And, and there are social pressures on us too. Uh, to be, you know, a lawyer or an engineer. Our parents might want us to, to, to be that. Um, and don't be a lawyer, please, unless you want to be a, a civil rights lawyer. Um, but, but don't, like, don't, don't try to please others. Don't try to, like, I was insecure years ago, and I did. And I wasn't happy. You, you will only find true happiness in your life once you don't give a damn what people think of you and you live your life in your own terms, and you do what you want to do, you'll be much happier. And very successful entrepreneurs don't do it for the money. That's right. They don't do it for the money. They do it because they want to make a difference. They want to put a dent in the universe. They care. They care. And what happens is eventually, because they don't care what people think of them, they become very successful, and the money follows accidentally. It always does. It always does. And the worst, worst thing we can do is wake up one day when we're a lot older and have trouble getting out of bed because we're thinking to ourselves, I work for a jerk who's paying me this much money to make his dreams become a reality. Don't let that be you. Don't let that be you. Uh, and if you're interested in getting a better job, um, you can go to, uh, go to Udemy website and take my course, the complete job course for free, not for free. Sorry. They're, screw it. Now I got to make it free today. All right. I'm going to make a free coupon for that today. Uh, if you're watching the replay many days from now. Yeah. yeah. The, so the coup, free coupon will be for the next three days. Problem with doing these live calls, I, I, I got to be true to it. So I will go and make a coupon today uh, for the complete job course. And if you stay on this call, what I'll do is I'll share it just in the feed here so you can get access to it. So give me about an hour and a half and, and we'll, we'll get a coupon up there. But take my complete job course for free. And also, I have another course called uh, the Complete Business Plan course, which, which helps you to reinvent yourself. So you are your own worst enemy. And when I say that, I'm looking in the mirror at myself. If you think people are sitting around thinking about you and criticizing you, they're not thinking about you. Don't worry. Don't, don't, don't give a damn about that. And if they are, screw them anyway. Do what you want to do. Because there's nothing worse than living the rest of your life. Okay, earmuffs are going to swear, which is rare, but I'm going to. There's nothing worse than spending the rest of your life uh, being someone else's bitch. It's true. It's true. Um, I, I want you to live your life in your own terms. Now what I have to do, actually, is I have to go and make that free coupon right now um, I, I love to do things right away. So give me two seconds. What I'm doing is um, I, I'm going over here to, uh, uh, to, to Udemy. I've got, a, I've got a browser open here. And I'm going to create this. <laughs> I'm going to create this free coupon for, for everybody right now. Uh, and I'm going to put it directly um, uh, in, in this comment field. It'll be worth the time. Trust me, please. Uh, this course I have, um, thousands of people have taken it. And I'm humbled to say that 
thousands and thousands of people have gotten the job of their dreams taking this course. And quite often I offer a lifetime guarantee uh, on this. So um, what I'm gonna do is, uh, in the background here, I'm trying to buy time. <laughs> I'm actually gonna go uh, and, and, and make that coupon for you. Okay, so hold on one second. Complete job course. And I'll let you guys see actually how it works. Hold on. So for those of you that don't teach online yet, you got, you got to start doing it. You got, you got to start doing it because we all have something to teach. And when, when one teaches uh, to learn. So I'm, I'm going into Udemy right now. I'm going into promotions. And I'm going to make a coupon. And I'll make it unlimited for three days. Okay, create new coupon. Here I go. Free three-day unlimited. And I will call it, I believe in you. So give me one second, send this to your friends as well if you want to, please. Copy, and let me just paste this in here for you guys. There you go, take that course for free. All right, uh, next up, let me put my, my, my toy back here. But watch that movie if you get a chance, it's, 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 it's epic. It's dope, as my kids would say. All right, next up is Saloni, uh, who's saying hello, Chris, hello, Saloni. I'm completely new to this, and I look forward to attending uh, every webcast of yours. Uh, you are truly uh, inspirational uh, and have taught me so much. Many thanks. Uh, thank you. I, God bless you. I appreciate that. My, I, I learn a lot from my students. My students inspire me. And, and every day when I get out of bed, right before I get out of bed, including this morning, what I do is this. I thank God for 10 different things in this order always. Christine, she's my wife. Andrew Matthew Dillon, my kids. Um, my mom, my dad. My brother, Jamie, Katie, Elizabeth, my sisters. And I mix up the order of those two, okay? So Katie, Elizabeth, and Jamie, you're watching. I love you all the same. Uh, and my students as well. So that's, that's the 10th one. So I'm, um, you know, in this, in this awful period of human history right now, um, just reflect on the positives. Uh, obviously, do, do what you can to help. Um, if, you're, if, if you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. Um, so do what you can to help, please. But also know that if you're staying home and you have kids, what a beautiful thing. What a beautiful thing to be able to spend time with family. You know, it's, it's like forced family fun um, in the confines of your own house or the backyard or when you go for a walk if you're allowed to. But, but I think our kids are going to look back on this moment, you know, decades from now, and they'll remember that we as parents were there for our kids and we were able to bond as well. So the glass is not half empty, folks. It's always more than half full. My cup overfloweth with positivity. And of course, I do pray a lot every day for everybody that's sick out there. It's tragic. And, and my heroes, my superheroes, uh, are, are the, uh, the doctors. I mean, they're on the front lines, uh, risking their lives. And you know, God bless them. In Italy, there's been 28 that have passed away already. Uh, but God bless the doctors. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, next up, what is something that you've specifically wanted to mention on this webcast today? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, and thank you, uh, Selene, for, for being a part of this. Um, and I hope you join us again. I know you mentioned this is your first, your first time here. Um, so I don't, I don't script anything. I, I don't plan anything uh, at all. Uh, and the, the backdrop actually that, that you see here and the way I control uh, the camera angles is, is with my feet. Uh, I'm, I'm a bit of a nerd, I, I, I know. Um, but um, the backdrop you see here is actually for um, a lesson that, I, that I'm, I'm teaching and recording for my, my MBA degree students. Um, and if you want to learn more about um, the MBA degree program, you can go to haroonventures.com. That's my, uh, my, my website. Um, and uh, we're actually launching an on-demand version as well very soon, very soon. So, so check it out uh, if you have questions. Um, and, and so this backdrop is, is, is for today's presentation uh, that I'm giving uh, to, to my students. Now, one thing I want to show you is right here, I, I'm talking about um, uh, giving a great speech in, in a recording I'm giving. And this here is a, uh, this is a piece of the Berlin Wall. It wasn't colored like that when they knocked it down. But I bought this at Checkpoint Charlie at, at a Udemy um, uh, event uh, in, in Berlin last year. And 
one of the reasons I bought this is because I walked in front of the Brandenburg Gate when I was in, in Berlin, and I just got shivers thinking about the late, great Ronald Reagan's speech when he said, um, Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. Um, and that was epic. And by the way, he went off script when he did that back in 1989. And his speechwriter, uh, were, speechwriters were furious at the time. He didn't care. Because when you speak from your heart, um, you're going you're gonna to get more people to listen. More people are going are gonna to love the speech. And that's why reality TV is such a big deal. Because people are just being themselves. So I, I want you to be you. You do you. Everyone else is taken. You do you. So I don't, and, and the Beatles here, this is for another reason. We're talking about marketing in my, my MBA degree program. Um, but I, I, don't, I don't come to these calls and have any, any set agenda. Um, I just kind of just take questions from, from the students, the customer. The customer is always right. Yeah. Okay, next up is Karthik. Hey, Karthik. Um, hello, Chris. I'm currently doing your financial analyst course. Thank you. And it's amazing. Thank you. Appreciate it. What would be something that you'd tell yourself when you were younger, uh, if you could go back in time? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I would tell myself, don't give a damn, Chris, what people think of you. Don't care. And if you try to be a person that everybody is going to respect or everybody's going to look at and say, wow, that, that's a great job. I wish I had that job as well. If you try to be that person, You'll never, you'll never be happy. Just do what you love doing. And, and to, to younger Chris, don't do that Wall Street thing. Just go teach. I, I know you haven't guest lectured before, Chris, and, and you're, you're terrified of public speaking. But go teach. Because if you think like this, this will work much, much better. Yeah. All right. Melody, Melody is a teacher uh, from Atlanta. Uh, and she's made a couple of courses on Udemy that I think you said you're just about to, to put online. Yeah, yeah it's, great, it's great to have you. Great to have you. And you're writing a book, too. So Melody writes, uh, good morning, Chris. Good morning. I hope you and your family are doing well. Likewise. Um, how is quarantine life coming along? Uh, also, I've completed all of my recordings for the course last night. Woo! Uh, one chapter to go uh, on the book. That's awesome. Congratulations. Congrats. That, that is so awesome. And for, for those of you that um, um, want to teach a course online, um, just go, go, to my, go to my LinkedIn profile if you want to. Uh, and, and I'm going to show you what, what I posted. And give me one second just to clean up these windows. We had technology issues this morning. <laughs> but if you go to LinkedIn uh, and you're connected with me, and please, please connect with me, um, you'll see that these are the doctors I'm talking. God bless them. God bless them. Um, actually, no, that's the gap. Make good for them. The gap here, which they're headquartered here in San Francisco. They're using factories to make mask gowns uh, and scrubs for healthcare workers. Good for them. If you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. And, and the solution for a lot of us and the way we add value is just staying home. That's right. Okay. All right. So um, there's, I, I, I posted this last night. Um, it's, it's in, in uh, LinkedIn. So go, go to my LinkedIn profile. Um, and then uh, what you can do is click here and, and, and basically I give you two courses to help you make money. And, and I mentioned this woman here. Oh, great. That's Teresa Greenway. She's amazing. So Teresa, I mentioned her in the post. Um, and, and this is just a, a beautiful story. I, I tell you all about, um, you guys can get shivers when I tell you all about this. But if you want, you can go here. And what I'll do is I'll just copy this link for all of you on, on the webcast. Um, but what, what, the, the, and that link will provide you with two free courses that they'll teach you how to how to teach you how to teach online, because as Seth Godin said, you already have everything you need to build something bigger than yourself. Yeah. So, but let me talk about Teresa Greenway for a second. She's amazing. So Teresa was living in with this asshole. Her her husband was really abusive. It was just terrible, and they were dirt poor. And she got the confidence one day to get up and leave that bastard. And she took a couple of her, her kids with her, her younger ones. And she was living off of food stamps. And she didn't know what she was going to do to, to be able to support her kids and herself. And so she thought to herself, what do I love doing? What am I passionate about? And 
it's bread, baking bread. How prophetic. And so what she did was she started making courses on how to bake bread. And she is a, a massive sensation and hugely successful uh, on Udemy and, and all over the world because of it. Um, but, but, and that's how she supported her, her family as well. It's a beautiful story. Um, yeah, the, the bread of life. It's amazing. I love it. I love it. So anybody can teach. And a lot of you are, are younger and you might, might play video games. My, my kids are told they're not allowed to do Fortnite while I'm webcasting. <laughs> but uh, a lot of younger people, they, they know this guy named Ninja. And Ninja is this dude who makes millions of dollars every year just playing Fortnite and streaming it over Twitch, uh, which is an Amazon subsidiary. Uh, for video streaming. Amazon bought that company for only $400 million. It was a great deal. And this guy, Ninja, started out on Udemy teaching people how to use Twitch. Uh, and so anyway, it, it, it's pretty amazing, pretty amazing. And, and recently, Microsoft paid him an insane amount of money to get off Amazon's Twitch platform and, and join Microsoft's new platform. They're, they're trying to buy their way in the, into the market, kind of like they did with Bing. Do you Bing? Anybody Bing? I don't Bing. I Google. You might bing if you work at Microsoft. Yeah. All right. Um, that's awesome. And, and Melody, when when your when your course is is up and up and running, let, let me know, please, because I want to I, I want to publicize it and and check it out because I know you've been working hard on it for for a long long time. Yeah. Um, but but and then you asked here, how, how's quarantine uh, life coming along? Um, you know, it's it. We have the kids here. It's great that I have the kids here, but at the same time, we are, we're very worried, very worried. And what we've done is we, uh, like when we get packages from Amazon and God bless the postal service too, um, USPS and UPS and, and FedEx and Amazon, Jeff Bezos, God bless you, Jeff Bezos for hiring a hundred thousand new people, uh, at this awful point in history. But when we get Amazon packages, what, what we do is we actually don't open them right away. We leave them outside on the porch uh, for, it used to be 24 hours. Now we're doing at least 48 hours. And then what I do, and there's a bunch of boxes that would pile up out, outdoors, food or whatever it is. What I would do is I would get on gloves and um, I would open up all the boxes, unpack everything from the package and not let it touch my gloves. When I, and then I'll drop whatever items we bought into another box, a clean box. And then I will put all of those boxes and everything into recycling. And then I wash my hands a lot and leave my shoes outdoors because those are my outdoor shoes now. Um, yeah. So I'm being careful. And the problem is that, and my brother, he's, um, God, God bless him. He, he, he was, you know, the first one to, to really let me know uh, about the seriousness of, of, of this, uh, along with two of my students. Um, yeah. Uh, Jason, uh, is, as well as, uh, Andrew Dupree. But my, my brother told me recently, he forwarded to me an article from the CDC, Center for Disease Control. And do you remember we had that ship here in San Francisco with thousands of people on it by the Golden Gate Bridge and they were quarantined. And, and the military would send supplies to them. Um, but what happened with that ship is 17 days after people with the disease left the ship, there were still traces, which means that, and I don't want to create any misinformation because there's a lot of it out there, but according to the CDC, it means, and the CDC doesn't want to panic anybody, but it, it means that there is a chance that an object or anything that's touched by somebody with, with the flu might live for more than two weeks. So just, yeah, we're being really, really careful with that. Um, yeah, yeah, but no, we, we, we pray a lot. We pray a lot, um, but um, yeah, I, I just keep, we keep busy, that's what we do. My kids are doing, like God bless Google for giving Chromebooks out. Uh, and when, when Vital and I, Vital is one of my amazing MBA degree students who I met in Berlin, um, later this year in December, Vital and I were gonna go to Rwanda, where he's from. Uh, to his hometown of Magu, and we're building a school, and we're going to find a way to get my courses and all online courses for free for 100 students this year, 
uh, and then many, many more the next year, and then a ridiculous number more the year after that. So, um, but uh, anyway, if, if you're on if you're on the call, uh, Vital, hope you're doing well. Hope your baby uh, Caleb is doing great as well, buddy. Okay, Saloni is saying, what is the best way uh, to manage a crisis in business? Yeah, so. I, I love to not teach theory. I love to teach based on real practical experience. And in my hand here, uh, I'm, I'm holding uh, an Intel a Pentium chip. Okay, uh, and let me, let me use another angle here. Oops. So what happened was, uh, and this is the best way for me to teach you how to, how to deal with a crisis. What happened with Intel in 1995 was the late, great Andy Grove, who's one of the co-founders of Intel. He discovered, and their company discovered, that this chip here, this Pentium processor, and this is one of the ones, this is faulty. If you do a mathematical calculation on this Intel Pentium from 1995, then if you might be 0.0000001% off. And I know it sounds like it's, it's nothing, but what, what, what Grove did was he... he he issued a press release right away and, and took ownership uh, of the mistake uh, because transparency builds trust in business. Then what he did was he went on all the talk shows. I remember it well. Um, he was on, um, I guess it was CNBC uh, as well as, uh, as, as CNN and, and Bloomberg TV and all these great TV channels. And what he did was he said, we apologize for this mistake and anybody that bought this chip you can send it back to us and we'll send you a new one for free, of course. And by, by owning up to it and, and you know, doing disaster recovery or, or you know, being careful that scientists don't screw up uh, medicines they're creating and stuff with, with this chip. But by owning up to it, what happened was millions of people all over the world were watching him thinking, this guy's honest. This guy's transparent. And what the heck is that Intel thing? Oh, that's a chip that goes inside your computer. Oh. And so it turned out to be a brilliant uh, marketing event globally. And it put Intel on the map, sort of, more so, uh, when it came to processors. Um, and, and it was an unintended uh, positive, um, positive event from owning up to the mistake. Because you can't brand it's so hard to brand something you can't see, feel, or touch inside your computer. A little side note, when, when Intel had those commercials for Dell computers or whatever it is, uh, HP computers, and you hear the Intel jingle and Intel inside, Intel pays 40% of the cost for that, that advertising budget. Um, it's a pretty amazing, amazing story. So there's that. And what, what they also teach you is, from a PR perspective, how to deal with, with awful events. And I'm going to make this up, okay? Let's, let's assume that people bought this blender bottle product. And again, I'm making this up. And a lot of people drank from it and they got very sick, very sick because the plastic, whatever. And what, if the CEO has to get on television and is interviewed, the CEO usually says something like this. They deflect the negative thing. And of course they take ownership of it. Um, but, but they usually say, here at the Blender Bottle Company, uh, we've been in business since 1950, and we've had an impeccable track record for customer service and responding to customer complaints. Then they'll move on and talk about whatever the issue was. So it's, it's, they kind of market themselves up front uh, and, and try to deflect the issue by, by saying the, the great policies they've had in place from a customer service perspective, et cetera, uh, for many, many years. So that's, that, that's one way to deal with a crisis. Another way to deal with a crisis in business is to tell yourself that with crisis comes opportunity. It's true. You know, as Warren Buffett said, you got to be fearful when others are greedy and greedy when others are fearful. And we just started buying stocks. It's true. Uh, and my wife and I were, were buying a building actually uh, in London, Ontario, uh, right by a Western University. Because this, it's counter cyclical to buy real estate by, by, by universities. Um, and we're doing it because everyone else is panicking. Everyone's panicking. So America's on sale. The whole world's on sale. And we're dipping our toes in right now. And it feels uncomfortable. Yes, it does. Very uncomfortable doing it. But my wife and I did, did the same thing after 9-11. 
uh, we, we lived in New York and I, I worked at Goldman Sachs then and I, I saw the whole thing. It was awful. But we, we bought our, our apartment. I think it was in late 01 when we bought it. And dude, it felt, ter- we were terrified. We we're like, are we doing the right thing? And I remember thinking at the time, we just got to be contrarian. You got to be different. If, if, if you buy a stock that everybody loves and everybody owns, and who's the incremental investor to push that stock higher? There aren't that many. And Dale Carnegie uh, once said that in business, you have to understand that people are often creatures of emotion and not creatures of logic. And I find that the most successful people in business are the ones that keep their emotions in check. And it's hard to do. But you got to tell yourself when things go really, really well, don't celebrate too much, okay? You can be a bit happy, that's cool. But stay even keeled. Because what if the inverse is true? You don't want to freak out. You don't want to freak out. Um, Yeah, so just, I, I would say, look at a crisis a different way. See it as an opportunity for you, always. With crisis comes opportunity. You know, the glass is, is not half empty. It's not half full. It overfloweth with positivity. Okay. Next up is, what is your advice to a 16-year-old? Um, gosh. I don't know. I, I, I would, I'm a different type of parent because I don't, like, I don't, I've never told my kids what I want them to be. I encourage them to just be them and be confident. But I'd probably say you're at a young point in your life and in the next couple of years, you might decide what you want to do with your life. Do what makes you happy. Do what makes you happy. And as Confucius said, if you have an occupation you love, you'll never have a job for the rest of your life. And don't give a damn what anybody thinks of your choices in life. And uh, Mamadou is saying, uh, hello, Chris, how are you? I'm great, man. I'm great. Hope you're doing well. I I couldn't wait to get up this morning to have my my coffee. I love it. I love like sometimes I'll go to bed and and before I go to sleep, I'm like, oh, I can't wait to wake up to have my coffee. I I love coffee. It's my advice. I don't smoke. I don't drink. Don't do drugs or anything. This is my advice. I'm happy. When I have a cup of coffee in my hand, I'm happy. Yeah. And then uh, Melody um, um, wrote, um, I I got laid off yesterday. Oh, I'm so sorry, Melody. I'm sorry. Um, um, and I remember you mentioned you switched jobs recently, so I'm sorry about that. Um, I got laid off yesterday, uh, but the great news is I have networked a lot excellent, with, with people and I beefed up my LinkedIn connections uh, with, with major people. I got one person willing uh, to make my, my book more, more visible as well. That's awesome. That's awesome. I love, I love your attitude. Love your positive attitude. Yeah. Yeah. I got laid off once too. Yeah. And, and it, it's, it's, if it happens to you or to anybody on this call, um, you got to be careful how you go out. Like if you're being let go for bullshit reasons, which, which happened to me, you know, I, I made a company, a lot of money. My, my boss felt threatened, but on the way out, I remember he extended his hand, uh, and, and, and I gave him a hug and I hugged the, I hugged the crap out of him and I counted seven or eight ribs cracked. Just kidding. No, no. I, I did hug him. And you got to be careful because that's your reference. If you don't leave on good terms, you know, when somebody calls for a reference, it, it, it could be tough. And you can always get a reference from, if, if, if you don't want to use your former jerk boss, you can also list a reference, somebody you worked with and, and ask your friends that still work at that company to write a, a nice comment about you uh, on LinkedIn. So that when you go to the review section, on LinkedIn, they Anybody that has any concerns about you leaving a previous company, they'll, they'll see positive reviews. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm sorry to hear that melody. Um, I'm here for you. And I, and I, I, I know, I know in my heart, your Udemy courses are going to do exceptionally well. Um, whenever you're ready, if you want, you can share them with us on this live webcast. And I'd be more than happy to provide my, my humble feedback because I've made every mistake there is to make when it comes to teaching online. And Juan, Juan David in the house. Hey, Juan David, how are you? Uh, Juan David is, is originally from Venezuela. He's 17 years old. He lives um, in, in Chicago. He published a be- best-selling book called Generation Optimism. And he's given two TEDx talks already. Yeah, good to have you. And Tian is saying, hi, Chris. Uh, best wishes for you and your family. Likewise, thank you. You mentioned about don't 
live uh, someone else's life? Uh, how about your loved one, your wife? I sometimes wonder how I could balance. What, what if your wife um, or close ones do not agree uh, with, with your passion? Oof. So <clears throat> whenever I start a company, uh, I write a business plan. And if you don't, there's a higher, a much higher probability your company won't work out because fa pl failing to plan is planning to fail. And so what I would do also is write some sort of business plan on whatever career it is you want uh, or whatever company it is you want to start and look through it uh, objectively uh, and unemotionally as well. You know, analyze the qualitative and quantitative aspects of that career move for you or that company you want to start and then share it with your spouse and, and see if that works. And if that doesn't work, let me know, please. <clears throat> All right. Um, but I still think you got to do what you're passionate about no matter what. No, no matter what. Yeah. It, it, it's your choice. It, it's your choice. It's, it's, it's your life. It, it's, it's, it's your life. And, and I'm, I'm sure your family will understand um, if you want to do something that makes you much happier. If they don't, so what? Do it anyway. And Eleanor Roosevelt once said, people are going to criticize you anyway, so you might as well just do it. Or as Sir Richard Branson says, screw it, let's do it. <clears throat> All right. Um, next up, um, Shubham is saying, hi, Chris. Uh, hope you're doing well. Uh, and don't get me wrong, uh, but when you say you found your passion for teaching, but isn't it because um, you were financially stable that, that allowed you to do this? No, no, no. I, I, I don't think that's the case. You know, I, I think a lot of teachers do it because they love it. You know, they, they don't do it for the money. They, they do it because they absolutely adore it. They love it. Yeah, and you, you got to think with your heart first, always, always, yes. And, um, <clears throat> and then somebody, uh, wrote, said, hi, Chris, I need Arabic language. Can you, I, I don't, I don't understand that the question. I'm sorry. Um, but, oh, if you're actually, no, if you, earlier I, I, I talked about giving away my, my courses, uh, for, for free. Um, and, and I have one actually in Arabic for you, uh, right, right here. So go to my LinkedIn profile and I'll give you this link as well. But what you can do is there's an Arabic version of a, a course I'm giving away for free here, right here, here it is, on how to, um, how to make an online course. So let me copy this and let me just go here and paste special into an incognito window. I'll show you this, okay? So this here is, is the Arabic version of, of the course. Uh, and, and what I'll do is, um, again, I will copy this uh, and I'll, I'll give this to you right now. So hopefully that answers your question. Thanks. All right. Back to Big Chris mode. Next up is Rohit is asking, how do you be somebody successful in America in a, in a time span of 10 to 15 years? What steps should one take in this journey to make the dream a reality? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I really think you have to write a business plan. Again, planning to fail. Failing to plan is planning to fail. Write a business plan, please, please. And you can take my course on that. Actually, Rohit, don't take the course because you're, you're one of my MBA degree students. And we're, we're just about to finish semester one. And in semester three and four, you're all going to be writing a business plan and, and part of the, uh, the venture capital boot camp program I'm creating for, for the MBA degree program. But, but, but I think that in order to be successful within 10, 10 15 years, as you write there, you, you have to write a business plan. You do. And the beautiful thing about writing a business plan, and I'll teach you exactly how to do it. The beautiful thing is that you, may, you might never finish writing the business plan because you start writing and you realize, oh my God, this is a terrible idea. And, and if I've saved you years of heartache and pain and money by you not starting the company after you write your business plan, I've done my job and vice versa, of course, as well. Yeah. All right. Next up, we have got uh, Samir, hey Samir, who's saying, I, I bought your financial analyst course yesterday and it's very useful and interesting. Thank you, appreciate it. All right, hold on a second. Sorry guys, this, YouTube just skipped here. 
Okay. Yeah. How could I contact you if there are any queries or clarifications regarding any points uh, in the video? Yeah, you can you can ask questions in the course. Yeah, we we answer questions within within 24 to 48 hours always, always. And and we've yeah, we've answered an insane number. Yeah, so we're pretty quick with that. Yeah. And and search the course as well for for Q&A because I've answered an insane number of questions in every course. Yeah. All right. Um, and Rohit is saying, <clears throat> pardon me, I'm 20 years old now. I wish to be a U.S. senator uh, by the time I'm 70 years old. Okay. Uh, but I'm not a U.S. citizen. I live in a different country. I'm taking steps to immigrate to the United States. It all seems too difficult, but I really want to become someone you know. I don't want to live a, a mediocre life and get stuck in a dead-end job. I want to do something to improve the lives uh, of the people in the United States. Uh, even if I don't become a senator, I'll start a nonprofit and do something like Bill Gates is doing uh, in the field of education and, uh, and unemployment. God bless you for that. That's awesome. So I, I guess the one person I can think of that made it big in politics that wasn't born in America is Arnold Schwarzenegger. And so he became the governor of the state of California. And for those of you not familiar with, with U.S. politics, um, the head of each state is called the governor. Um, and there's also Congress people that represent different regions. And, and in many countries, it's called a member of parliament or an MP. And then there's also what's called a senator. And there's two senators per state. Yeah. So Arnold Schwarzenegger did it. Um, he, he networked a lot um, in the state of California to, to make it happen. But, but I really do believe that if you want to get anything in life, you have to network a lot. You know, relationships are always more important than product knowledge. So I would, I, I would network like crazy. And you've read my networking book. And for those of you interested in, in how to get a, anything you want in life by networking, uh, you, you can always go to my website, haroonventures.com. And then you can scroll down to get this networking book uh, that I wrote. Um, but I would just network aggressively, Rohit. That, that, that's what I would do. That's what I would do. And you, I think you have to be born in the United... Like, I, I could not become president because I wasn't born uh, in this country. Um, but I think for any other political role, it's, it doesn't matter where you're born. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Next up. And, and Rohit, make sure that you, like, in our MBA degree program, remember when I had you all create your resume and then we did the... I had you create a 10-year a resume, which means what your perfect resume is going to be in 10 years. And I got that idea from Jeff Bezos because Bezos has his product managers um, for, on Kindle, AWS, et cetera, Prime. He has them all write a press release today that's going to be released in the future. It's brilliant because that's a gap analysis because here's, here's where the product is now. Here's where the product should be when they release that press release in the future. And there's a gap. How do you fill that gap? I want you to do the same thing as well. I want you to write your perfect resume in 10 or 20 years today and then work on filling that gap. And Humanshu is saying, hello, Chris. Um, I, I love the little graphic you put there too. Thank you. I hope you're doing great uh, and keeping safe. Likewise. I mean, en I'm enjoying your courses on Udemy. Uh, the COVID-19 uh, is a complete disaster for the world economy and human lives. I, I hope things get well soon. Yeah, so do I. Thank you. Thank you for, 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 for your well wishes as well. Thank you. Yeah. And the doctors are the real heroes here. They are. Yeah. Um, next up, uh, Kunal is saying, uh, good morning, Chris. I uh, hope all is well. Likewise. Uh, do you think that oil prices may go negative, as in producers will pay you to buy oil if the U.S. doesn't intervene on time? No, no. No, I, I don't. I, I still think that no matter what happens with the global economy, there will be some underlying demand for oil because no matter what happens, people are still going to want to drive. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and companies are still going to produce products like, like plastic. This is made by oil. That's what this is. That's what this is. Um, so, no, I, I don't think commodity prices will, will go negative. I, I don't think they can. I don't think they can. All right. But it is fascinating to see the saber rattling going on between, you know, Riyadh and, Mo Riyadh and Moscow right now. Yeah. All 
Next up, uh, Canal is saying, when the University of Cambridge temporarily closed in 1665 because of the bubonic plague, Isaac Newton was forced to work from home uh, during the quarantine. He came up with a theory of, of gravitivity. Yeah, yeah. No, it's funny. I actually went to, uh, I have a, a good buddy named Rob Percival, who, who teaches on, on Udemy as well. And I went to go visit him up at Cambridge, actually. Uh, and he walked me through all the buildings uh, and he showed me where, where Darwin studied. Uh, and he actually showed me the tree that Sir Isaac Newton sat under when, when the apple apparently fell on his head. Yeah. When he invented gravity. Yeah. Before then, we floated. That's called dad humor. Okay. Next up is Rawlings. Hey, Rawlings. Rawlings saying, I want to start an online business in Nigeria. My country has an emerging economy, and I know there are a lot of opportunities. I just don't know where to start from. Yeah, no, no, thanks, thanks for the question. So what I recommend doing is, is taking my, um, my, my business plan course. So, so go to Udemy uh, or go to my website. Actually, go to Udemy. It's easier. Uh, and just sign up for my, my complete business plan course. There's a 30-day money-back guarantee. you got nothing to lose. Um, and the course will explain in a lot of detail, and I will write your business plan with you digitally sort of while you do that, uh, that course. And if you have questions, you know, let me know. And the real purpose of this weekly call, and I think we're in week number 82 or 83 now, the real purpose of this call was initially when I made that business plan course, uh, I, in the course I mentioned, Hey, if you want me to help you with your business plan, uh, and offer my humble advice, I'll do a weekly webcast. Yeah. So you can always ask me here business questions or within the course. Uh, and we get back pretty back to you pretty quickly there. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Next up is Joe. It's been a while, man. Hope you're doing well. Uh, Joe is saying, good morning, Chris. Uh, do you have any advice uh, on connecting with people uh, during times uh, like these when it is difficult to meet in person or generally those in other, in other cities? Yeah. So I recommend using Zoom. I recommend using Zoom. It, it, it's amazing. And, and it's, it's, I, when I teach my, my, uh, my MBA degree students, we have a lot of Q&A sessions uh, where we use Zoom. And it's, it's Brady Bunch style sometimes. There's like nine people. I'm totally dating myself there but we've had nine people before actually i think our record was 10 um but but i think you can network that way as well so joe what i rec recommend doing is go to my website download my networking book for free uh, and then apply those concepts um to setting up zoom meetings yeah okay um next up uh rawlings is saying your your complete course on cryptocurrency is an eye-opening uh, I, I bagged my certificate today. Congratulations, Ben. That's great. That's great. Not many people finish the course. That's long. That one is, um, I think it's 24 hours long. Yeah. And I dedicated six months of my life uh, on that. And, and I had a blast. Um, and I learned so much. I learned a ton. Um, but actually, when, when I started making that course, and I was on, uh, I was on NBC uh, just, just talking about cryptocurrencies. If my little sister Katie is watching, that was me showing off. Just kidding. Um, no, but, but I remember when I started making the course, um, I was positive on cryptos, like seven out of 10. And then by the end, I hated them. Like I was a three out of 10, but I still do believe that there's a handful, a bunch actually you can buy and do extremely well. Um, and so in that course, as you know, I, I created a big 49 step process for you to analyze cryptocurrencies. Uh, and I did that actually because it really upsets me that a lot of people are losing a fortune when it comes to cryptocurrencies. And it's not a regulated market. It's scary. It's scary. And I think a lot of people are going to go to jail. People are going to go to jail that did the pump and dump schemes on, on YouTube. Like they'll say amazing things about a crypto. Everyone buys it. Then they sell. Then they say terrible things about the same crypto. Everyone sells and they buy. Rinse, lather, repeat. It's disgusting. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, Ritesh is saying hello, Chris and everyone. Hello. And Joao. Hey, Joao. Hope you're doing well. And you're in uh, um, Brazil, right? I think it's Brazil. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Joao is, is saying, hi, Chris. Uh, what do you think about the whole ban on buyback situation? Yeah. I think it's a good thing. Because it's disgusting to give big companies a lot of money to help them and have them not help people. You know, if they, they buy back shares, it basically makes their price earnings ratio go down because there are fewer shares outstanding. I think it's if you have enough cash to do it yourself. But if you're given uh, cash uh, from 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 the government, absolutely not. You know, that, that, that should be put to, to good use helping out, you know, consumers. Um, and 
what disgusts me about 2008, when we were within 24 hours of bank machines not working, is the government bailed out the banks. And then two years later, the bankers all got record bonuses while the average Joe lost their house. Um, it's total BS. Uh, and and I'm, I'm definitely a capitalist. Absolutely. However, I think that we should, the governments should create a massive, massive tax on banks for at least a decade. And that tax should go to people that lost their houses. Yeah. What is your opinion on the, on the Bitcoin having to occur? Oh, what is your, I misread that. My fault, not yours. What is your opinion on the Bitcoin having to occur in the next weeks? Yeah, so I don't, um, <clears throat> I, when it comes to cryptocurrencies, um, and I own Bitcoin, I bought it years ago, and I'll never ever sell it. When it comes to cryptocurrencies or, or any stocks in general, I, I always love to look at what my target price is years from now. And as one of my analysts at my, my hedge fund, Jason, said years ago, and I miss him, he's a great guy. He used to say, Chris, I don't know the path, but I know the destination. And so I don't really think of the path in between. I'm, I'm long-term focused. And as Warren Buffett said, the longer the view, the wiser the intention. Yeah. But I actually, I make it a policy never to tell you what stocks to buy or investments to buy. I speak more generally because I believe that if I teach you how to fish, you'll eat for a lifetime rather than giving you a fish where you eat for a day. I think I butchered that saying, but I think you know what I'm talking about. Boot. That's how we say it in Canada, okay? It's not about Americans. It's a boot. Learn it. A boot. All right. Next up is... <clears throat> and the reason I say it was I was playing Grand Theft Auto V recently, and there's this character, Trevor, who's a badass, and the U.S. Army in that video game were making fun of his accent. It's kind of a... Okay, I'm not going to talk anymore about that. All right. Um, and uh, Tyler is a hey, Tyler um, is saying, hi, Chris, I had a chance to watch uh, other people's money with Danny DeVito. OPM. Great movie. Um, and you watched the other night and you loved it. Awesome. Donuts and money. Can you explain uh, the Wolf of Wall Street and what it was that got them in trouble? Thanks, Chris. Oh, you're most welcome. Yeah. So this guy, Jordan Belfort. And if you guys haven't seen The Wolf of Wall Street, it's a great movie. There's some pretty funny scenes as well uh, with Leonardo DiCaprio. Um, so what happened was this guy, Jordan Belfort, he was part of a pump and dump scam. What they would do is they would rip off um, just retail investors uh, with, with penny stocks or lower price stocks. Um, and they, they also did some fraudulent IPOs with, with Steve Madden, the shoe company. Uh, for example. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and I can't believe this guy, Jordan, is getting this much airtime. I don't think he should. I don't think he should. You know, it, it's like somebody that used to be in the mafia, you know, going on the talk show circuit. You know, it's just, it's, it's not right. It's not right. Yeah. So I have no respect for that guy. But it was a good movie. All right. Um, and, and, and Neil is saying, uh, hello, Mr. Haroon. Uh, can you please create a live webinar regarding uh, the subject of day trading? So I, 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 I teach about that, uh, but I really want you to be long-term focused. Okay. Uh, there's, there's no such thing as somebody that's been a successful trader. Otherwise we know their names. We don't know the names of any successful traders because they don't exist. They don't exist because they get fooled by randomness. The worst thing that can happen to you is you start trading and you make a lot of money initially. Then you get overconfident. Because each month has 20 trading days and a lot of random stuff can happen within 20 days. That's 20, that's 20 weekdays, 20 trading days, same thing. You know, stocks can go up or down uh, based on geopolitical events or saber rattling between uh, countries or talks of a stimulus program um, or another company in, in the same sector uh, said something positive and the stock went up or vice versa. It's too hard. You're fooled by randomness, which is a great book by Taleb. Read it. So if you're curious about, but I do look at technicals, but I look at fundamentals first, valuation second, and a distant third is technicals. And I use it for deciding when to take some profit sometimes uh, if one of my shorts is massively oversold or vice versa with, with, with a long. 
Um, but what I'll do is this. I'll, I'll show you where to go to learn all you need to know about, about technical analysis because I actually made um, I made a video on this a while back. So you go to my, my, my YouTube channel um, and, and then what you do is you go here. What do we got here? Um, and just do a search. Okay, so do a search on trading. And I'll, I'll actually give you the link as well here so you don't have to go. And I've done it, done it a bunch of times. Day trading is not a career. Day trading is not a career. Uh, I, I've said it many, many times. Um, so um, let me get the longest one here. Hold on a second. I, I did one on technical analysis as well. So let me do a search on analysis. And, and, and I vlog every day. I'm, I'm doing it for the next 10 years. I'm on day like 600 right now. So here it is here. Yeah, this is thir 13 minutes long. Um, actually, this, this one might be good too. So I'll give you both of these, okay? So copy link address and I'll paste number one for you there. And then I will get number two and, and, and you can watch this uh, if, if you want, if you want, yeah. Yeah. And I even have here a video on, is the TV show Billions Accurate? Watch that if you want to, yeah. <clears throat> Amid this COVID scenario, what are the business opportunities in the healthcare industry? Yeah. So I, um, I, I think, so there's a company that, that I'm an investor in and I'll never sell my shares. And it's called Gilead, uh, ticker G-I-L-D. And I'm not telling you to buy it. I'm just telling you I own it. And I think it's going to be, and I don't know anything, but I think a company like that is going to find some sort of cure. Uh, and it's a great company. And, and they're based here in, in the San Francisco Bay Area in South San Francisco, where all the biggest biotechs are in America. And what Gilead has done, and one of my students actually, when I used to teach at San Francisco State during the evenings, uh, one of my students, great guy, I let everybody, all my students present on any topic they're passionate about. And my student was HIV positive. And he said, Chris, can I present on Gilead to the class? And I was like, absolutely. And basically he said this, this is fascinating. He said, if you're HIV positive, if you take a, a, a drug from Gilead, you can live the same life, no side effects, except you might die one year earlier. So instead of making it to 120, you'll make it to 119. Uh, and, and so I think it's going to be, uh, and you, you'll notice that like HIV and AIDS, is, it's, it's, an, it's an awful issue. It, it's terrible. It's terrible. However, you'll notice that people don't talk about it as much nowadays uh, because of Gilead. Uh, that, that's found a way to kind of help people live with, 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 with HIV. So I think it's going to be a company like Gilead that comes out with um, some sort of solution to this this awful illness uh, that and, and awful point in human history that we're going through right now. Yeah. yeah. Samir is saying, "What have you done to make uh, quantum leaps uh, in your career?" I networked. I networked a lot, um, and relationships are more important than product knowledge. It's always networking. Okay. And the earlier you realize this, uh, the more successful you'll become and happier too. go to my website, haroonventures.com, download this networking book, read it cover to cover. It's over 200 pages with links to many videos as well. A couple hours of videos I made. Uh, and I guarantee you, uh, it, it'll help you tremendously in your pursuit of your passion by networking. Uh, Ratchet is saying, I'm about to enroll uh, into the, the MBA at Babson uh, and I'm targeting uh, healthcare. Yeah, Babson is great. Babson is probably the best business school on the planet for entrepreneurship. It's amazing. It's amazing. I have a, a lot of friends that went there as well. Yeah, it's, it, it's incredible. Um, next up, we've got, and if I miss any questions in between, please let me know. Uh, Caroline is saying, uh, what course uh, do you that will help with fundraising at this moment in time. I have to uh, raise a large sum of money, uh, but now uh, we're in this pandemic. It's it's confusing of, of how to really crack this. Yeah, I have a course on Udemy uh, called Fun, Fundraising Advice uh, from a Successful Venture Capitalist. Yeah. I should have renamed it Fundraising Advice from a Venture Capitalist. Yeah. 
but I've raised and managed over, over a billion dollars in my life, in my career. Um, and so that, that course is kind of greatest hits. But remember, the most important thing, though, is, is networking. Uh, and, and as I mentioned um, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I want you to go to my website and, and download uh, my, my free networking book. That will help you out tremendously, I, I promise you. And then take my, my fundraising course if, if you want to. And if it's not helpful, the course, you could 30-day money-back guarantee. All right, next up is Pro Music, who's saying, uh, Sir, I'm in India. Uh, call me Chris, please. I'm in India. My father was working in a private job. Now there's a lockdown of 21 days. Now we are in hot water because of our mortgages. Can you please donate money for us? And then you provide your, 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 your email address, yeah. So what, what I recommend is, is this. Um, so all over the world, governments are coming up with massive stimulus uh, packages. And make sure to call your local politician and ask them if you would qualify for this. Also, I want you to call your bank and I want you to ask them if you can defer payment uh, of, of your mortgage uh, or, or, or other big debts you have. And, and a lot of them will say, yes, you got to ask. If, if you want anything in life, you got to ask. If you want a date, you got to ask. Um, you know, if you want to get a raise, you got to ask. Uh, if you want to get a promotion, you got to ask. Like a lot of people don't realize that like a lot of people, they, they, when they're younger and they're in school, they keep their head down, they work hard and they get good grades. And then their, their family is proud of them. Everyone's happy and life works. And then they go to, into the workforce. And after many years, they look around, they're like, I don't get it. I do a better job than all these people. And all these people are getting promoted, but not me. And they're getting raises. It's because you have to ask. Nobody has ever made to CEO without asking to get promoted over and over and over and over and over again. So call up um, any financial institution you owe money to right now and ask them if there's a chance for you to pay less um, or, or defer payment until later. Yeah. All right. Um, next up, uh, Tricky Stewart uh, is, is saying, I, I like that name. It's cool. Hi, Chris. Uh, I, I've mailed you um, one of my queries. Please consider when, when you get free time. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm so sorry. I don't, um, I don't answer emails. Uh, or, or, or most LinkedIn messages, just because I get literally thousands of them, thousands. I, I can't, I, I, I'm drowning in them. Um, but the, the best way to reach me is always right here through this, uh, this call on Thursdays. Or if you're taking one of my, my, my courses, just ask within the course. Um, or if you're one of my MBA students, you, we, we can set up a, a call. Yeah. All right, Mohammed is saying, can you talk about startups in this uh, pig problem in all of the world? Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I think that the, the best way to start a company is from your home on the internet without putting up any money at all. And you can take my complete business plan course and I'll give you a lot of ideas on what companies to start. But if you have an internet connection, which you do, um, and, and if you have a, a camera, an iOS camera, you know, iOS handset or, or Android, then you've already got everything you need to build something bigger than yourself, meaning you can make an online course. And go to my LinkedIn profile and just click on, I, I, I have a message I posted last night where I'm, I'm giving away two courses for free uh, on, on how to make an online course. I think it's the best side hustle there is. Okay. All right. Uh, and uh, next up, uh, Kundan is saying, um, sir, how was your experience of starting your own hedge fund? Uh, and, and what did you learn from that? I learned that I don't want to be managing money and making money when the market's going down. I remember it was October 2008 and the market was down. Um, it, it was down 20 or 30 percent or something. And I made three or four percent that month. And it was really unhealthy because I, I came into work every morning hoping that stocks would go down. Well, what does that mean? Well, it means a lot of times stocks go down because they're not doing well and they let people go. And it just wasn't healthy. It wasn't a healthy way to live. It wasn't. It wasn't. And I also learned that being short, that being short term is just, it's not the most prudent strategy, which is why I kind of 
morphed my firm into a VC firm, and we had a, a, an investment actually in, in Facebook when it was private. Uh, and then I worked in the VC sector for you know four years, whatever, and taught during the evenings. Uh, and I did VC because it was longer term focused. Uh, but through that whole process, I, I learned one thing. I just want to teach. I just want to help people. Like when I, I remember every company I've worked at, I, I've always done well, whatever, I can humbly say it. But during the, the review process, my boss would always say to me, and it was really tough for them to say, they'd say something like this, Chris, you're doing a great job. However, can you spend a little bit less time mentoring people on other teams? And I, I, I never said yes uh, or, or, or no. I just kind of listened and yeah, it was just me. So, yeah. And sometimes it takes a while to find your passion. Like it took me until my 40s. To, to find out I love teaching. And, and I wish in hindsight, I'd done it like right out of high school or, or university or whatever. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing being able to serve others and, and help others. And for me, like I, the way I am is I'm happier always when I'm helping other people. If I go through a day without helping somebody, I'm not as happy. It's just a DNA subfabric of who I am. Yeah. Yeah. And this is fun. I'm having fun. All right. Um, and, and Guillermo is, is saying, hey, Chris, uh, first time watching your webcast live. Thank you, Guillermo. Welcome. And I hope you join us again. Thank you. Uh, and, uh, okay. And, and when you guys talk to each other, I love it, but I, I don't read those. But keep doing more of that. It's great. Do you think that technology and design field people will work remotely more in the future? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you know, it, before I invest in any company, I usually ask myself, is this company in this industry going to be more relevant or less relevant in five years? You know, YouTube is going to be much more relevant. And YouTube is the only gold rush in history, by the way, where it costs you nothing to make the product. And it's the only gold rush in history where you have access to billions of consumers for free immediately. And I made a, a course uh, called the Complete YouTube Course, uh, which, which will help you out a lot with that. Um, but, but I know I, I think that working remotely is, is definitely be much a bigger deal in the future. Absolutely. Um, and a, a lot of companies are, you know, are, they're, they're kind of being forced to figure out this whole work from home thing. And, and I think a byproduct of, of this nuttiness we're all going through right now, this coronavirus, in the long run, is more people will be able to work from home um, because big companies tested the, the, the way to do it, the process throughout this awful virus point in history. And it worked, it worked. And that's great because it's good for the environment. You know, you're not gonna drive as much. It's good for your family as well because you're around your kids and you'll be happier as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, just paste your question, please. And by the way, if you paste an internet link, um, it, it won't go through because for some dumb reason, uh, YouTube blocks those. So if you want to send me a link, like say it's cnn.com, you do cnn space, D-O-T space, com. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, and then Kundan is saying, please say uh, UX or user interface design as a career for maybe freelancing for clients uh, and also remote work for, for big companies. Yeah. I mean, you, you can, you can all work remotely. Like if, if, if some of you are thinking how, you know, how can I make money on the side through, through a side hustle? Um, what I want you to do is I want you to go to fiverr.com where I, I hire a ton of people here to do, do stuff. And it's a minimum of $5. That's what, that's why they call it Fiverr. And there's also um, another website called Upwork where you can hire freelancers to, to do stuff here. So you can actually make money on that, that, that platform as well, if you want to. And Ritesh is saying, Chris, uh, you are, oh, thank you. I appreciate that. God bless you. Zach, Zach in the house, great to have you. And you're most welcome. And then Tricky is writing, writing may God keep uh, smiling on you. Thank you. Thank you, Trick. I appreciate that. And likewise, likewise, yeah. yeah we're, we're all in this together. And sometimes what puts me at ease is when I tell myself when it comes to business, you know, 
God already knows what's going to happen. And that makes me more relaxed and I don't worry. And if I do worry a lot, then I'm basically questioning my faith and I don't want to do that. Yeah. Melody wrote, thank you, Chris. That's so kind of you. You're, you're welcome. You're welcome. Tons of people saying thank you. Um, yeah, you're most welcome, please. Yeah. All right. Um, and then uh, uh, Kate Sky is saying, wow, I just saw uh, that I took your presentation in public speech course uh, a year ago. It helped me change a job with a bad boss. Yeah. And I even started presenting. Thank you for making a difference in my life. Oh, you're most welcome, Kate. You're, mo you're most welcome. And, and I was an awful presenter for years. And, and for any of you out there that are terrified of something in business, like you're intimidated by accounting or finance, uh, or, or, or presenting, I want you to run to your fear and condition yourself to enjoy it. I want you to look fear in the eye and conquer it. Because once you're, you're on the other side of fear, you'll never be the same. Um, and then Tricky wrote, uh, I believe I will pay back my teacher uh, by becoming uh, successful. It's cool. I love it. Muhammad is saying, yeah, and I really believe in learn, earn, return. I believe in that. Yeah. And I believe that when one teaches to learn, uh, it's kind of like, remember when you were younger and you had a buddy that asked you questions about a math test and you, you kind of helped them. And by you helping them, you were basically teaching yourself. It's like that. When one teaches to learn. Um, uh, next up is uh, Muhammad is saying, um, uh, do you have a plan to grow your YouTube channel? Yeah, just slowly and steadily. I'm not, I'm not after a land grab. Like I'm not one of those guys that has to get on all the TV shows and rah, 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 whatever. You know, my, my, my purpose in life is to serve you all, uh, my, my students. Yeah, yeah. So I, I like slow, steady, manageable growth. And my company is small too. We just have you know, a handful of people working here, um, but levered for massive upside too. Yeah, so and th things, things have been good. Yeah, I can humbly say. Yeah, and I'm taking care of my employees too, uh, big time. Uh, and, and and I told them uh, if their families have, just let me know how I can help sort of thing. Um, so I'm taking care of them. Uh, and anybody that, that works uh, at our house, like the, the cleaning staff uh, and a bunch of other people, we're, we're paying them 100% of their salary still. And obviously they're not coming here, but it's, it's yeah, we're, we're just doing that. Yeah. And anybody not doing that that can do that is is a jerk. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, next up is um, Oleg is saying, uh, hi, Chris. Uh, in your course, uh, you used an Excel spreadsheet and say this was the framework that you used uh, as an analyst. Is there a market for a software that does it automatically? Yeah. Yeah. So I pride myself on providing you with tools that I create that are free and free forever. But if you want to buy professional versions of those tools... They basically do the same thing, except there's live direct feed sometimes, which is not good for you because you'll end up watching stocks up and go up and down all day long. It's not good for you. Um, and, and there are companies that, that make financial software like Bloomberg, uh, which is a ripoff. I used to pay thousands of dollars every, night, every month for my team um, for, for Bloomberg software access. And I realized I can get all that stuff for free from Yahoo Finance. Yeah. But if you need like high frequency based software using Tibco, whatever, just to get fast access to using middleware and all that stuff, um, you need to buy a professional system. Um, but I'm not a, I don't want any of my students to be traders. Okay. And then um, JD, Juan David, is saying, good morning, Chris. Yeah, how are you doing today? I'm great, thank you. I'm always great, thank you. Um, grateful to be here, uh, and thank you for doing this. My pleasure. I'm, I'm grateful for you to be here as well. And, and Juan David wrote that book, uh, Generation Off. Let me, let me get it. Hold on one second. I, I think it's a, a masterpiece. Um, These are just some of the books my, my students uh, have written. And a lot of them use my, my template as well. If you want a template to write a book, um, you can go to my website, haroonventures.com slash all lowercase write book. W-R-I-T-E 
B O O K, all lowercase, one word. Um, and, and I've written a ton of books using that, that template I created. It's easy. If you know how to use Microsoft Word and a browser, um, then you can write a book as well. And it's great because you can bring this book with you uh, to uh, job interviews. Uh, you can you can bring it uh, a book with you to customers, customer meetings. Who does that? Nobody. You ought to ask yourself, how badly do you want that job? So anyway, here, here's a bunch of books from my my MBA degree students, um, and uh, this is this is one one David's book. It's called Generation Optimism, and it rocks. It rocks. Yeah. So. Um, and Juan, David, if you're going to apply to, I know you're 17 now, you mentioned, or 16, I can't remember. But if you're going to apply to Harvard, I want you to include this with your application. Because your, your life story is so unique and so inspiring. And for those of you not familiar with, with Juan, David, uh, and I can disclose this because it's in his book, um, he, uh, he comes from a very difficult background. Um, and he's incredibly inspiring with what he's overcome. Um, he lived in Venezuela, uh, and you know it, it, his, his father is no longer with us. But I, but I guarantee you this, uh, Juan David, and Juan David and his mother moved to Chicago. I guarantee you this, Juan David. Your, your your father is your father is looking down on you from heaven right now, and he is beaming. He's got a massive smile, and he's very very proud of you as well. Yeah, it's a great accomplishment. Yeah. And one, David has done two TEDx talks at 16. Wow, amazing. My students are awesome. I love it. Um, and then at one, right, uh, I, I took your advice regarding uh, my website. Can you take a look at it? It's one, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I remember looking at it last week. You, you asked me for advice. Let's go there together. Yeah. Okay, so let's go here. And, and I like the way you typed it so it can actually work. I'm surprised it worked actually like that. Okay. Usually YouTube blocks these. All right. Yeah. I like it. I like that. The black, black and yellow. It's awesome. It reminds me of that song, Black and Yellow. Two time TEDx speaker, Generation Autism. I, I, I like it. I like it. Um, the only thing I'd say is make it a bit, it, it's got to be, I, I, looking at it on mobile, I'm not sure what it looks like on mobile because I'm sure it makes it smaller um, and you get the staggered menu on, on the top right hand corner. Um, but I would say that it, it's a little bit difficult to read your, your name relative to your, your shirt. Um, it's not impossible, but it, it, it's just slightly difficult. Um, and let me go down here. Three words. I love it. Search, find, follow. It's awesome. It's awesome. Every, and I signed up to your email list, so I get your emails. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I like it, man. It's good. Oh, dude. Dude, who is that guy? That guy looks like Brad Pitt, doesn't he? Bradley Pitts? Just kidding. I get it all the time. People on the streets, people say, are you Brad Pitt? I'm like, no, I'm, I, I know we look identical. Yeah, yeah, I have a more attractive nose than him, but yeah. No, thank you for including me here uh, along with, um, wow. Oh, Chicago Tribune, that's right. They, they, they wrote up your book, thank you. Well, your website's perfect. <laughs> no, it's great. It looks good, dude, looks good. And thanks for, uh, for including me there, I'm, 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 I'm touched, thank you. All right. Uh, and then one wrote here, I finished your, your great YouTube course. Thank you. Uh, I finished my intro and outro. Can you please give me feedback? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, please delete the spaces between uh, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Smart. Okay, one, see this, dude, this guy, kid's like a genius. Amazing. He figured out how to include links here. You see this? All you do, because uh, they, they won't let you include links here in, in, in YouTube, but let me show you. All you do is you put a space between somewhere within the, 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 okay, yeah, yeah. All right, so two spaces, I, I, I feel you. Let's go there together. Let me take a look. I might have to actually bring uh, a speaker over here and we will paste this in and check out your intro and outro. All right, go here and then here and then make sure I've got the audio set up. Should be fine, external, good, all right, yeah. Let's do this. All right. Um, oh, here we go. I forgot to put the period in. All right. Here it is. 22 second intro outro. Let me make this better quality.
Okay, so um, I, I would like it's 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 hard to hear you. Uh, in in I, I know you're trying to inspire people with, with the music, but I would do one of two things. Uh, I'd either I'd either get rid of your voice, uh, or um, I would um, make the music much much lower, uh, and and keep the voice uh, uh, audio level the same. Also, you start yeah, mid sentence. Um, something globalization. I, I'd start at the beginning of that sentence if you can. Yeah, and also um, what I would do right right here. It's great, uh, but right, right here, um, I, I know you're trying to synchronize your your voice to what you're saying. Um, I, I wouldn't do that. I, I wouldn't do that. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's cool. And for those of you not familiar with with that setting, that's that's down uh, right by Wall Street in New York City, uh, and that's a bull. Uh, and when the market's doing really well, they say we're in a bull market because it's like running with the bulls. Uh, and when we're in awful markets, like a, we're in a bear market. So remember, bull means a, a great market, bear means bad market. But that's a cool picture there, man. I like that. It's cool. Okay, and then you've got. Um, and then, and there, there, there's a pause here too, yeah. So I would, um, I'd, I'd skip this pause, and then the music. I wouldn't let it jump right in. I would fade in or out slowly. Yeah, that's that's what I recommend. Yeah, yeah. It's great though, man. I like it. I like it. It's great. Way better than I could do when I when I was younger. Please, it's incredible. And the music is inspiring too. I I, I like that. Great job. All right. Next up, um, and Juan, Juan is de saying he's got a, uh, a, a, I have an interesting idea uh, to help uh, local restaurants. It's scalable and relatively simple to do. Uh, do you have any suggestions on how to do this, calling them and, and getting customers? Um, so it's, yeah, it, 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 it's tough. It's tough. So I have a, 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 a really good family friend. Um, uh, Zaid's his name, um, Zaid Ayoub, and, and he started um, a version of Chipotle for Arabic food called Saj here in the Bay Area. And business pulled back a lot, obviously, when, when this whole crazy COVID-19 thing emerged. And the way he's coping with it is they're doing um, a lot of takeout, a ton of takeout. Uh, and so restaurants are allowed to be open uh, if, if, if you provide takeout. Uh, and there's a gazillion delivery services here, uh, like Grubhub and a bunch of others uh, that will deliver all the food. Uh, and they take a hefty margin as well. So, yeah, yeah, that, that's what I'd recommend. Just have them partner with a Grubhub uh, or any kind of uh, meal delivery service, which, which I know for a fact exists where you are in Chicago. Yeah. All right. Um, and then uh, Jose, Jose, uh, is, and Jose is from, from Brooklyn, and he's originally from Venezuela as well, small world, um, and uh, he, he works in the, in the payment processing industry, and he, he's a rock star salesperson too. And he used to work uh, offshore on rigs in the oil industry, and it's great. He's home now. He gets to spend more time with his wife and daughter. So Jose wrote, hi, Chris, how are you? And hi, everybody. I started to take a lot of courses on Udemy on how to code because I feel that I need to learn how to do it. Um, I, I was really good at it in university and I never pursued it. Yeah. Yeah. It's it, anybody can code. Any, anybody can do it. Um, it, it's a lot of fun. Um, and I say anybody can do it cause I, I, I used to do it full time. I'm, I'm not the smartest guy, but you can go to Udemy and, and for those of you interested in coding, you've, and you've never done, it, I don't care how young you are or old you are. It's easy. It's fun. And you can do it from scratch without any experience at all. So let me just clean up this real estate here. And I'll show you. All right. So you go to Udemy. Uh, and then what you do is you search for Angela Yu. And I met her recently in Berlin. She's great. She's great. So she used to be a doctor. And she woke up one day and she told herself, I don't want to be a doctor anymore. I just want to, I want to teach. It's fun for me. And she teaches you how to code from scratch. Uh, and her courses are insanely great. It's amazing. So this course, for example, if you want to learn... Um, how to make a website. She'll teach you from scratch. She'll teach you from scratch. 
Uh, and it's like 50 hours. And she has another course that will teach you how to make uh, an iPhone or Android app. Uh, it's 50 hours as well. And she's just great at what she does. And, you know, her positivity shines through and she, she enjoys it. And, and I think that if you're trying to reinvent yourself and if you're sitting around at home, um, I, I think a, a better investment than, than my courses is to take hers. Or, or courses by a guy named Rob Percival. And they're, they're both in England, which means they, they speak gooder than me. Uh, but you can reinvent yourself. And you might be surprised. You might be surprised at how much you love to code. And coding is not all this complex scripting stuff. A lot of it is fun dragging and dropping of objects. It's fun. And anybody can do it. And I don't care how old you are or how young you are. Um, you got to be exposed to it. So take those courses online. Try it out. It's fun. Anybody can do it. Anybody can do it. Um, and the, the average life expectancy uh, in the world now is 26 years longer than it was back in the 1950s. And that means that you're all 26 years younger than, than you think. If you're, if you're 56, you're actually 30. So now, now is the best time to reinvent yourself. Okay. And if I miss questions, let me know, please, guys. But but Melody's writing I, I Bing, <laughs> which is the the Microsoft uh, uh, search engine. Um, I, I Bing because I earn points, and those points uh, convert to gift cards. Oh, interesting. That's right. Microsoft's trying to buy customers. It's interesting. I, I get it now. It's like Honey, that Honey plugin, which everybody should have. It's amazing. And PayPal bought them recently for four billion dollars. Yeah, I've saved a fortune with that little plugin. Yeah. Um, it's the only plugin I recommend. And Kundan is saying how to get these kinds of remote jobs in any big company from other countries. Is it only networking or do we have to do more, um, more in addition? Uh, just network, just network, you know, make a name for yourself. So for example, if you want to do programming or, or, or make, I don't know, make brochures or presentations or use Photoshop or do video editing, whatever it is, do it on fiverr.com and Upwork as well. And if you make a big name for yourself on Upwork and you do extraordinarily well and you network a lot using the, the skills I've, I've, I've been teaching you, then there's no reason why you can't get a job at, at a big company anywhere in the world. That's right. If you're good, big companies will do whatever it takes. They'll hire an army of lawyers uh, to get you to come to the mothership or their headquarters in whatever country that is. Yeah. There are no limits in life except for the limits you set for yourself. Hey, hey Gregory, hope you're doing well, bud. Uh, and Jose is saying, Chris, what do you think about the fact that the food industry and restaurants will be impacted? Hold on a second. Will be impacted with this new uh, trend due to complex situation. The industry will never be the same. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that the, the, the most successful restaurants, what they'll do is they'll really focus on delivery, really focus on delivery. Um, and, you know, Uber, whose business is obviously suffering a lot right now. Um, they will probably morph part of the business model, and they've been doing this anyway, into a delivery service. And uh, I think at some point, Amazon is going to see Uber as a huge competitor. Um, so I, I think that, I think Uber is going to morph into that company that delivers food as well, if they can do it, uh, if they can scale it. Um, and once self-driving cars become the norm, which isn't that far away from now, uh, then I think business models like Uber will do extraordinarily well with when it comes to delivery. So if you're a restaurant, I'd really focus on 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 delivery. And a, a lot of a lot of restaurants actually the biggest profit margin they make in more normalized times is, is a profit margin on on uh, catering. It's a big business because you can charge big companies a lot, a lot, uh, and, and they have massive budgets uh, as well, as well. So um, yeah. That's what I would say. Uh, next up is Pro Music is writing, hey, Chris, do you have methods to earn a living in this tough time? Yeah, I, I recommend um, thinking about starting a side hustle. Um, I want you to go to Fiverr.com, that's F-I-V-E-R-R.com, and look through what people are doing there services-wise and see if you also have those skills as well. Uh, and, and just register on Fiverr and start selling stuff on Fiverr. 
like making presentations for people or whatever it is. You can definitely do it. Definitely do it. Yeah. Um, all right. So Jose is saying, uh, please let me know uh, your thoughts about it. Uh, and, it, and if you have an opportunity to start in a food business, how would you structure it um, if you're the partner investor? Let's say you, you, you put in uh, 30%. So food is a really, really tough gig, dude. It's really, really hard because the profit margins are, are razor thin. It's really, really tough. It's tough. It's tough. Everybody's dream uh, in, in the food business is to start a company, the next McDonald's or next Chipotle, whatever. Uh, and then scale it through franchising like like Subway is done. It, it's hard. It's hard. Um, and, and, and I would say a, a better way to do it instead of starting a, a restaurant, if, if you want to go down that, down that path, is maybe look into licensing uh, a franchise from, from Subway, for example. Yeah. Uh, or invest in McDonald's or all these other restaurant companies that are on sale right now. And Kunan is saying, sir, here in India, uh, we are locked uh, down until the 14th of April uh, and it might get extended. Uh, cops are beating up normal people without even questioning for going out to buy groceries. Oh my God, that's terrible, dude. I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, and then you wrote, I, I, I heard the numbers of gun buyers increased in America after quarantine was, was declared. Uh, do you think it could lead to riots because of hunger? Uh, is is a strong emotion, yeah. Well, God bless you, man. I, I I hope um I hope and pray it doesn't get to that. Um, wow. So I um I, I do worry about security. You know, like I have cameras everywhere uh, in my house, and we got we got an alarm as well, and whatever, um, a couple alarms actually. Um, and and yeah, yeah, I, I monitor things closely, um, and yeah. Yeah, but yeah, it's it, no people are definitely like guns are sold out everywhere. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I don't, I don't, I don't think we'll get there. But I'm, I'm the eternal optimist. You know, my, I'm, I'm all, I always see the glass as, as being more than half full. Obviously, I don't think we'll get there, but I, I think it's best to be conservative just in case. Um, I'm not saying buy a gun. I, I would never say that, but. Just be careful. Just be careful. And if you don't have an alarm uh, in your house, um, you get one. Or, or, or buy a, a, a camera like Arlo, A-R-L-O. Uh, or just do, do something like that. Yeah, just be careful. Just be careful, yeah. Um, but we're, we're, we're very much aware of it. Uh, and where I live, the, the police are all over the place all the time, just in case, just in case. They're doing a great job. Yeah, so God, God bless the police force, yeah. Yeah, but I, I really do hope that things get 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 better for you there. I'm sorry to hear that you're 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 going through that right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, and I know you mentioned India, but but China, the Chinese government's biggest nightmare for decades now has been civil unrest. Like what we saw in 1989 with that hero that stood in front of the tank uh, in Tiananmen Square. That's just the tip of the iceberg. You know, if, if there's social unrest, and the Chinese government knows that too, uh, and so part of me feels that the, the Chinese government is kind of easing restrictions in, in a certain province right now because there could be civil unrest, and that's a risk, and, and it's kind of a risk that the, the the Trump administration is taking right now too, saying let's all get back to work at a certain time. It's a risk. It, it's a risk, and I, and I personally prefer to be more cautious. Uh, and, and work from home if you can, or stay home much longer than, than the government tells you to, if, if you can, if you can. Yeah. Yeah. But God willing, it doesn't lead to that. Yeah. And, and I think go governments understand what could happen longer term, um, which is why you have these massive stimulus programs. Like the stimulus program, like in 2008, we were within 24 hours of bank machines not working. It was scary. And so the government poured a trillion dollars, whatever it was initially into the economy. Now they're doing two trillion. Um, and I know that with inflation, that was 12 years ago, the pricing point's got to be higher in terms of the dollar size for the stimulus program. But I think they understand what could happen, what could happen um, in terms of lawlessness and all that nutty stuff. And I think before it ever gets to that, or if it starts to get to that, uh, then what will happen is they'll bring in the National Guard uh, and the Army as well uh, to kind of help the police, so to speak. 
Uh, and so I think in India or in any country, it, it, I think you'll start to see army officials get involved, not just the police, if things get crazy. And God willing, they don't. God willing, they don't. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. And Mina. Hey, Mina. Mina's saying, hello, a bit late. I hope everything is fine. Stay safe, everyone. Likewise. Thanks. And, and Zach said, um, I, I, I take your business plan course, uh, but the Excel sheet keeps crashing. Uh, even though I removed the country name and currency, it would be a great idea uh, if, if you can use Google Sheets. Yeah. Yeah, so it, it, it shouldn't crash. Um, let me know what, what version of Excel you have. I recognize, recommend having uh, 2013 or later. Yeah, that's what I recommend. And also, a lot of people don't realize this with Excel, but Excel doesn't work as well if you have it running on certain hard drives. Like if you ever run it off a thumb drive, sometimes it doesn't work for whatever reason. Uh, make sure you have it running off your C drive or your primary drive uh, if, if, you're using, um, if you're using a Mac. But the spreadsheet should work uh, either, either way, and I've thoroughly tested on, on both platforms. Yeah. But let me know what version of Windows you got, or version, I should say, of, of Excel you've got, and, and update it as well. So if you have Office 365, update it, because you might have another program uh, that's running on your computer that has overlapping DLLs or, or system files and forces Excel not to work properly. All right. Um, and Gregory is saying, uh, a great quote behind you. Isn't it awesome? I, I love it. I love it. That, that, that guy inspires me so much, man. Mark Twain. Incredible. And Mark Twain, he said, and, and for those who are not familiar with Mark Twain overseas, he was an American poet and a Renaissance man and a funny guy too. But he lived in San Francisco for a long time. And he said, the coldest winter I ever spent was the summer in San Francisco. And San Francisco is weird, man. Like, it's cold. It's not hot like L.A. People think it's like, when I first moved out here, I was watching the O.C. And I thought, oh, it's going to be warm weather, whatever. And, and it's cold, dude. It's cold. Uh, and if you go north of San Francisco, it's warm. It's bizarre because you got this microclimate with, with the bay here. And the warm season actually in San Francisco is the fall. It's, it's bizarre. Yeah. All right. Um... And Eric in the house. How are you, bud? Eric is uh, one of my other students in my MBA degree program. And he wrote this great book, this awesome book, book called Awesome Ego Trip. Uh, and it's called uh, Awesome Eco, Eco Trip, sorry, Eco, no, Ego Trip and the Art of Personal Power. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. So always great to have you, Eric. And Eric used to work um, at Bristol Myers, ticker BMY, and he lives in the Netherlands now. Yeah. And he's got a badass green screen he set up at home. It's so good that we had him on a, on a Zoom call uh, recently in the MBA degree program. And we had no idea that what was behind it was not his office. It was great. He, he mastered it. He mastered it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, and so Eric is saying, um, a company acquired uh, orphan status. A company acquired orphan status for COVID-19 drug. It got critiques as the total adjustable market will be big and they will now progress the marketing as a normal drug. Uh, what, what do you think? I, I'm not, yeah, I'm not too familiar with the, with the healthcare sector. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I don't even know what orphan status means uh, until now. Um, but I think that if, if, if things get crazy, I'm, I'm, I'm all for us taking risks, um, you know, rather than somebody dying than using a, a, a test based or, or a new drug is, who, who cares if someone's going to die anyway, um, give them the option of, of taking this, this new drug that hasn't yet received FDA approval. Um, that's just my, those are my two cents. I'm not a doctor though. Do your own research. Thanks. And Nishant is saying, what is the best way to manage time? So I think if you write down your, um, your schedule every day, um, you'll be much more productive because if you want to get something done, give it to a busy person. Uh, and so what I do is um, with, with my MBA degree students, um, I, I prepared something. And let me do the overhead camera here. It's not the best angle, but what the heck, let's do it. So um, I, I've, I've got this, this here. Um, and basically, uh, my, my MBA students, I ask them to fill it out every day to schedule everything every day. Um, and also schedule time for, you know, for, for exercising, um, health, whatever, um, nutrition, family. And at the end of the day, I have them score it, score, score themselves um, out of 100%. Um, and 
And by, by, by doing that, what, what happens is you, you actually, and let me try this, this angle might, might work better over here. By, by doing that, you accomplish much, much more, right? And you can be self-critical too in terms of are you getting everything done or, or, or not done? Um, you got to set a date because you got to do daily. Because if, if you write down your goals, you got to set a deadline date. Otherwise, it's just a dream. That's it. So I have my students do this every day. I, I give it to them in PDF version, PowerPoint version, OneNote version, and tons of other uh, formats as well that work with open source software like, like LibreOffice, Libre which is French for free office, which is like Microsoft Office, but free. Yeah. So I, I recommend doing this. This, this I give to my, my MBA degree students. Um, if you want to get something done, uh, give it to, uh, to a busy person. I also have um, a, a more basic version for, for everyone to use. Uh, and, and I'll show you that. Um, and so let's go over here. I am having technology problems again today. All right, so hold on a second. So yeah, the, the one I want to show you is you just go to Haroon Ventures, okay, my website, slash schedule, okay, all lowercase. And then what you can do is you can download a, a file that's similar to this one, but, but a little bit more simplistic. Uh, in PowerPoint, and, and this will open up in Keynote and leave all, all presentations offer products. And then, and then what you do is you, you, you fill this in every day. Okay. And, and I wrote here, please note, this is the format I use, please delete or change text here if you want to. So this is the old format I used before I created the new one for my MBA degree students, but I, I would have my, and this, is, this is old, I would have my, uh, my goals up here. Uh, and then I would write down my to-dos for that day. And, and I would always do this the night before. Okay, so for tomorrow, I would do this at 9 p.m. Okay, tonight. So you schedule tomorrow's day tonight at 9. I write down to-dos here. Uh, I'd write down here um, by hand, actually, what I was going to do throughout the day. Um, and then here, do the elliptical trainer, which is in my garage. Spend time with family. Uh, go for a walk <laughs> because it releases serotonin, which helps you think better. And at the end of the day, before I did the next day, um, I, I would score myself out of 100%. And we're all different. But you write the day number here, so day one and the date today, and see how many days you can do it in a row. And only do weekdays, otherwise you drive yourself nuts on the weekend doing it. So I think my record is 30 or 40 days in a row. Um, and at the end of the day, I'll score myself. Again, we're all different, I get it, but you know, I put God first. Um, if I didn't pray, uh, I'll take off 10% or 20%, whatever. Family, if I didn't spend enough time with family, I'll take off 10%. If I didn't eat the right foods, um, then I'll take off um, 5% or whatever it is. Uh, and so I, I eat really healthy as well. Um, this is an antioxidant. It's got greatest hits of everything that's going to hopefully stop me from getting cancer one day, whatever. And then below that, you can see, um, did, did I do some weights? I don't do too much, but a little bit because it really releases serotonin. And a bunch of other things, like my, my body mass index, it's too much information, I know. Um, did I wash my face twice during the day? If I don't wash my face just one, dude, it's a disaster. I don't need to go there. Um, did I put my customers first? Um, did I, did I make sure that I didn't surf the internet all day? <laughs> did I make sure I didn't answer too many emails? Did I, did I get my 20,000 steps in, which means 10,000? You know what I'm talking about. And then this is just other things too, social media stuff. And then I score myself, uh, at, at the, at the bottom there. Yeah. Um, so anyway, it, it, it's helped make me uh, much more productive, more productive than I've ever been in my entire life. Uh, and, and you know what I'm talking about with that, that dude at work or school that gets good grades. They're in great shape. They have a great social life and life just works for them. It's because they stay busy. If you want to get something done, give it to a busy person. And if you want to accomplish much more, you got to write down your goals on a daily basis. This is like daily goal setting. My goal tomorrow is Stella in the house. How are you, Stella? Stella is from uh, South Korea. Uh, she, she's one of my, my, my wonderful uh, MBA degree students. Uh, she's great. We all love her. Uh, and, and Stella is writing, hi, Chris. Uh, hope you're staying healthy and positive. I am. Thank you. Uh, so much anxiety and fear uh, uh, amongst us. We, we don't know what lies ahead, but we're optimistic. Yes, we'll overcome. We, we've got this. Yes, yes, absolutely. We will get through this. Absolutely. Um, you know, now is not the time to, to, to be negative. Um, and I, I'm cautious, more cautious than most people when it comes to this, this virus thing, whatever. Um, but, but there are positive things going on 
which, you know, if, if you live with your family, you get to spend more time with them. Yeah. And we will get through this. We will get through this. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Hey, uh, Asamina, hope you're doing well. Asamina is, is living in Greece right now. Um, she, she works in the airline industry for Ryanair and she's making her, um, a, a video game on the side, which we're all going to play soon. I can't wait. Um, next one is pro music is saying, how do you put stocks in the market? I am I'm, I'm a, a complete beginner. Yeah. Yeah. So take my complete financial analyst course, uh, on, on Udemy or go to my website. You, you can get it there. Um, and I've got actually on my website, you can buy nine courses for, for 50 bucks, which is a pretty good deal. I'll, I'll show you if you're interested. So go to haroonventures.com and then um, this is 50, get nine courses for 50 bucks and I have a, a 30 day money back guarantee. Uh, but within this, this bundle, I've got the complete uh, financial analyst course is in here. Where is it again? Oh, and a complete personal finance course as well. This will help you out a lot uh, understanding how, how to buy stocks. Uh, and so... I also, I recommend whatever country you're in, um, call your bank and ask your bank what brokerage firm they recommend. And quite often banks, if they're allowed to from a regulatory perspective in your country, quite often banks uh, also have um, a brokerage division where you can buy stocks. So call your bank and ask them. And Amazing Science 360 is saying how the system runs in big companies. They operate uh, though the CEO or chairman are not present. What are steps for it? Uh, thanks. Yeah. So, 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 so it, it's kind of like the army where you, you have one general in charge of the whole army. Uh, and then you have different lieutenants that uh, are, are, are more senior uh, than, than, than the grunts, the, the newer people that just joined the army. Uh, and so that's how big companies are managed as well. You know, there are, there are big companies have many, many vice president, vice presidents and a couple of senior vice presidents. So usually it goes CEO who supervises a bunch of senior vice presidents and each of these senior vice presidents supervises many vice presidents and each vice president supervises many analysts, that sort of thing. Yeah. So it's very regimented. All right. And Juan David is saying, uh, what do you think um, is better, um, having a portfolio with the top 10 to 15 companies or having a retirement fund or an ETF? I've created uh, my own portfolio and I've done pretty well, uh, even in, in these conditions, yeah. Well, I don't ever recommend buying mutual funds because the fees are a ripoff. And for those of you that want more details than that, just go to my YouTube channel and do a search on mutual funds. Uh, I think they're a scam. Uh, I think ETFs are smart uh, to do um, because they are lower risk and um, at least the index funds versions um, like SPY, which is the spiders, which is the SP 500 or the Q's, which is QQQ, which is the NASDAQ tech stocks only, not the biotechs. But when it comes to picking individual stocks, I only recommend doing it if you understand accounting and finance. And, and accounting and finance is, it's, it's, a, it's a language, eh? It's, it's something you got to learn. It's not common sense. Um, and, and I have plenty of courses that, that will teach you, you know, finance and accounting. Um, and, and if you understand finance and accounting, and if you do your own write-ups on companies, do one-page write-ups, which I teach about in many of my courses, then you can invest. That's what I'd say. Otherwise, I would just stick to ETFs. And given the fact, one, that you're, you're, you're young, I think you mentioned you're 16, the rule of thumb usually is that the younger you are, the more risk you can take when it comes to investing. And this is kind of old school, but money managers years ago used to say, you take the number 100 and then you subtract your age. So if you're 30 years old, 100 minus 30 is 70. And that means 70% of your investments should be in, you know, a little bit higher risk. And 30% of your investments should be in low risk, low risk stuff that you can't afford to lose. And by the same token, if you're 95 years old, 100 minus 95 is five. Uh, and so 5% of your investments should be in high risk, 95% in very low risk uh, instruments uh, because you, you might not have that much time left in your life to, to recoup that. Yeah. Although I do believe that 
there are many people in this call that are going to make it to 150. It's true. You will. All right. And Neil, Neil's writing, uh, thank you, Mr. Haroon. You're, uh, you're such a down-to-earth person. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Likewise. And Pro Music uh, is saying, hey, Chris, do you know any website or blog for stock market analysis? Uh, do you learn all stock names uh, of the companies? Yeah. So I, I think you can go to Yahoo Finance uh, just to learn. Um, and l I'll give you a couple of resources right now. L let's go there together. Okay. So let me go here. And let me just give me one second, guys. I'm going to change this camera angle here. Okay. Hold on. Murphy's Law It's going to be the last one I choose, right? There we go. There we go. Okay, good. All right. That's fine. Great. All right. Um, so yeah, l l let me show you a couple, couple of websites. So g give me one second. New, create a new pane here. So you can go to Yahoo Finance if you want, just to look for, for stock quotes and, and, and learn uh, a, a little bit about, about, um, about the markets. But I caution you, don't read any stories that are sponsored because it could bias you. Okay. And don't ever trust anybody to tell you what stocks to buy. You got to do your, your, your own, your own, okay? Your own research, I should say. Um, like, never listen to this guy here. What can be bought or sold right now? Ne never do that, please. Um, yeah. I, I, have, I have to show you why, okay? This is, I might get myself in trouble here, but I don't give a damn. If I can save you money and heartache, I've done my job, okay? So what I'm going to do is um, I, I'm going to show you something. So in 2008, we were within 24 hours of bank machines not working. And Jim Cramer got on TV and told everybody to buy Bear Stearns. And I want to show you what happened. Okay. So YouTube, Jim Cramer, um, 2000, uh, and Jim Stewart, Stewart. Yeah. Stewart interview. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was, it was disastrous. Here it is. It's three minutes. Um, this video might get blocked now. So you won't be able to watch a replay, but I, I don't care. I, I, I have to show you this. It's important. So what I'll do. The president and I talked earlier in the day yesterday about watching it. I enjoyed it thoroughly. Um, <laughs> what? Give me one second. I, I want to get my face off this so you guys can see the whole thing. The president and I talked earlier in the day yesterday about watching it. I enjoyed it thoroughly. Um, what was it? A major speech? A legislative breakthrough? How the hell did we end up here, Mr. Kramer? No, it was Thursday night's Daily Show, where host John Stewart skewered CNBC financial pundit Jim Kramer. I can't reconcile the brilliance and knowledge that you have of the intricacies of the market with the crazy bull I see you do every night. There's a market for it, and you give it to them, and I think There's we do... There's a market for cocaine and hookers well, you knew what the banks were doing and yet were touting it for months and months the entire network was and so now to pretend that this was some sort of crazy once in a lifetime tsunami that nobody could have seen coming is disingenuous at best and criminal at worst but like a prosecutor bearing down on a decidedly uncomfortable witness stewart argued that the financial network and by extension much of the business press had given the public a false sense of financial security. The bulls and the bears are duking it out. But as Stewart himself said, Jim Cramer was not the real target of his anger. The voice of experience you can trust. And CNBC is at root a symptom of what has happened over the last year and a half. It's a network with a very small audience, about 300,000, but a very affluent one, where they were relentless at times hyper-caffeinated intensity that's focused on the day-to-day -day movement of the markets. It's been another one of those days, up and down and up and down and up. The reason they exist is to do this moment by moment, what's going to happen tomorrow. And, you know, I think that's pretty much a mugs game in terms of, of what it can actually tell ordinary people. And you guys knew that that was going... The core of Stewart's anger is his belief that in its coverage, and in its lack of skepticism, much of the press was painting one picture to the public while knowing full well that the reality was very different. That it is uh, a game that you know, that you know is going on, but that you go on television as a financial network and pretend isn't happening. 
Yeah. Actually, says New Yorker financial writer Jim Sirwicky, much of Wall Street's problem was that it fooled itself. A lot of guys on Wall Street, one way or another, drank their own Kool-Aid. Now, with the disappearance of $50 trillion, four and a half million jobs, and an immeasurable loss of financial well-being, the anger at what has happened is showing up across the media universe. It reaches from ABC News, which followed the corporate jet travels of Bank of America CEO with OJ-like focus, to a piece on a lavish weekend party thrown by a Chicago bank. That aired on TMZ, a site mostly featuring the misbehavior of celebrities. But the real issue is this. How do we get the hard questions asked before things go wrong? That is the very serious question the late night comedian was raising, Katie. All right. Jeff Greenfield, Jeff, thank you for your perspective on that. All right. I want to show you one more. Okay. So Jim Cramer, Bear Stearns. I want to get, hold, let me get the short one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Peter writes, should I be worried about Bear Stearns in terms of liquidity and get my money out of there? No, no, no. Bear Stearns is fine. Do not take your money out. This is really, if there's one takeaway other than a plus 400 somebody, Bear Stearns is not in trouble. I mean, if anything, they're more likely to be taken over. Don't move your money from Bear. That's just being silly. Don't be silly. Okay, just so you get a sense of what's causing the agony by this point, I know you've been talking about it. It's financials led by Bear Stearns after what essentially is a bailout from the Fed. Bear Stearns shares are down 90% this morning, and it's not just Bear. Pretty much every single bank. So the bottom line is, I don't want you to listen to anybody. I want you to do your own research always. Okay, always, always, always. Um, Every, you have to understand in business, everybody is biased. They're not unethical. Not that many people are unethical. There are some. But everybody is biased. So if you see a CEO being interviewed on television, of course she or he is going to be positive on the company. You know, they're great salespeople. That's how they made CEO. If you see a money manager on television, a mutual fund manager, yes, they might disclose they own a stock, but they're going to say great things about that stock. Because they're biased. You've got to understand everyone's bias. And you've got to form your own opinion only. Okay, don't rely on anybody else. I want you to do a full investment write-up on every stock before you buy them. And my courses teach you how to do that. So let, let, me, let me provide you with uh, one more link. Um, there, there's a, a great website, a great company called uh, the Financial Times. And it's like the Wall Street Jur Journal for Europe, whatever. It's, 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 it's actually owned by, by the Nikkei now, but it was originally a, a British paper. Uh, and so I want you to go to this website, ft.com. And w when you're on this website, just read stuff that teaches you how the world of finance works. Don't read about what stocks to buy, but just read things that, 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 that will teach you about why things are the way they are. So let me go down here and find something interesting. Um, Right here, unemployment insurance. What does this mean? Watch what happens. You can't read it, okay? But I'm going to show you a trick. And I will never get sponsored by the FT because of this, but I don't give a damn. I just want to help you. So what you do is this. Every, every article you click on, by the way, it, you, you're gonna, it's, it's going to say you got to pay. But here's how to get around it. Copy and paste the article title, okay? Then click here. Boom. Now you get access to it. And the reason that works is because... If it didn't work, if they put up a firewall at the FT, then search engines wouldn't be able to index uh, any of that stuff uh, when we do a search on, on the FT and, and articles and stuff. So I, I think the FT is a great website to use. Don't rely on them or anybody in terms of what stocks to pick. Just read articles that explain how the world works. Like if interest rates are cut, you know, read that article. What does that mean? You know, if gold prices are going up a lot and times are scary, read that article for why. Learn how the world works. When it comes to bonds or fixed incomes or options or other stuff you don't understand, read that article to understand. But don't let anybody ever bias you and tell you what to buy. All right. Uh, Mahadur is saying, uh, uh, hi, Chris. How are you? I'm great, thanks. I'm great. I'm, I'm happy. I'm always good. I'm always good. Thank you. Okay, and then uh, uh, Vignesh is saying uh, marketing strategies for payment startups like PayPal. 
Um, I guess that's a question. Okay. So what are marketing strategies for payment startups? So I, I think the best marketing you can do is one that costs you nothing. The best marketing you, you can possibly do is to create your own YouTube videos because YouTube is the only gold rush in history where it costs you nothing to make the product, which is basically marketing or advertising. And it's the only gold rush in history that you have access immediately uh, to, uh, to, to billions of potential customers. So I want you to start making uh, YouTube videos. Uh, and, and when you make YouTube videos, make sure that it's, it's educational as well. You help somebody for free. Maybe you teach them about the payment industry, for example. Also, um, I, I recommend leveraging your network. And you can go to my website, haroonventures.com, and download my book on networking for free. And I want you to do what Mark Benioff did. So Mark Benioff, for those of you not familiar with him, um, he, he's the, the, the brilliant CEO of, um, uh, of, and founder of, of Salesforce.com. And what Mark did, and one of the reasons why he's so incredibly successful, is he made friends with 50 of the top technology and finance journalists in the world. And because of that, he got a lot of free publicity for Salesforce, his company. And he was also very controversial, which you have to be as well. What does that mean? Well, Sir Richard Branson, what he did was when he launched Virgin Cola, he, and it, it didn't end up doing that well, but what he did was this. He rented a tank and drove into Times Square. And on the tank was a lot of cans of Virgin Cola. And he declared a war on Coca-Cola and Pepsi. And obviously you can't do that in this day and age. A rented tank and go into Times Square. Uh, but you got to be controversial. And Mark Benioff was controversial as well. I remember for years, I, I would go to these, uh, the, the, these, these events uh, when I was at Goldman. And Mark would be on a panel and he would always show a big logo. And it said the word software with a line through it. And that was controversial. And back then, that was you know, before Salesforce went public uh, in 2004. And, and nobody understood it, but Mark was saying, look, running software in your computer is a loser game. It, the cloud is the future. And nobody got it at the time. But it was interesting because he was being controversial. Like for me, for example, with my MBA degree program, if I wanted to, I could do something silly like this. I could say, don't go to Harvard Business School, HBS, because two thirds of HBS is BS. And then you might think, well, what about Haroon Business School? It, it, that, it, it's a different H. Yeah. <laughs> but just be controversial uh, when, it comes to, uh, when it comes to marketing and leverage your network a lot to get meetings with people that work uh, in the media. And I promise you, if you use LinkedIn uh, and you do a search, an advanced search on somebody that works in the media or just enter in San Francisco Chronicle or, or, or whatever newspaper it is, you will find people that work at those papers. And you can set up a coffee meeting, which I explain how to do in a lot of detail in my book, which you can download my website, my book on networking. Just go to haroonventures.com and download the book. All right, next up is um, Asamina, who's saying uh, the asking bit is so true. I had to ask for my transfer, and yesterday uh, I signed a permanent contract. Um, I, I signed a permanent contract uh, unless either I or the company wishes to terminate my employment. Awesome, good for you. You'll never get anything you want without asking. Yeah, you'll never get it. Um, you got to ask. Um, like there's there's one company that that... I, I do business with online. It's not you to me. It's another one. Um, and I, I, I wanted to make more from what they were doing. And so I said, instead of me getting 20%, I want to get 40% or I'm going to pull my courses. And was it a bluff? I don't know. But, but I got it because I asked. That you, you'll only get a raise in, in life uh, or in a big company or promotion if you ask. You will never get anything in life if you don't ask. You got to be relentless, man. You got to be like a pit bull on a pork chop. Like my son, Dylan, he's 10. You know, he'll, he'll say, can I have candy? I'll say no. Uh, and then he'll wait a minute. And he's like, can I have candy now? I'm like, no, later. I'll say, well, how about now? I'm like, go to your room and eat candy. <laughs> just kidding, sort of. But you, you got to be like a kid and, and just be relentless and ask, ask, ask. Otherwise, you'll never get anything in life. 
All right, but, but great to hear that you, you got that contract to estimate that. That's, that's awesome. Congrats. And Jimmy Reardon, Jim, the biggest Yankee fan in the world. Just kidding. I, I, I know you're Red Sox, Red Sox Nation. I get it. I get it. I'm just kidding. I, I, I kid because I love you, buddy. Yeah. And Jim is one of my, my amazing um, MBA degree uh, program students. Uh, and he's got a, an awesome startup um, that is going to make a ton of money and help oil companies make a fortune as well. And uh, we're going to go over it today, right? We're going to go over the business plan uh, today. I, th I think you mentioned you wanted to do that during the NBA office hours. Yeah, yeah. So Jim wrote, uh, hey, Chris, uh, with Major League Baseball uh, on furlough, I, I didn't even know what the hell the word furlough meant until I saw an article with hotels and furlough. Uh, and, and I guess that means, that means letting people go. Um, yeah, so uh, Jim writes, hey, Chris, with the NBA on furlough, um, Maybe you and, and I finally have a chance uh, at playing in the big leagues. Let's start. Dude, fucking A, man. Let's do this. Let's do this. I, I want to do it. I was always waiting until later in life. You know, kind of like I'm in my 70s or 80s, I'll, I'll, I'll try to you know learn a sport and get a medal in the Olympics or something. But uh, no, no, no. That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be fun, man. I'd love it. I love it. Dude, it is so hard to hit a, a baseball. Like when, when I worked in the hedge fund industry, um, City, one of the firms that covered me, I was their client. They rented out the baseball stadium here uh, in San Francisco uh, where, where the Giants play. And we were able to do batting practice. And there was a guy throwing balls at 80 miles an hour down the middle. Maybe it was, actually, no, it was a machine when I did it. Yeah, 80 miles an hour down the middle, which is slow because major leaguers usually get 90 to 100 mile fastballs thrown at them. They didn't curve. I knew exactly where the pitch was going. Right. It's like a Houston Astros trash thing. Yeah. And I got 30 pitches. I missed almost every single one. I foul tipped one and I got a, a single. It might have been a single just over second base. Like doing that, like I, res I have so much respect for athletes, man. Try doing that. Try hitting a home run when the ball is coming at you 100 miles an hour and it's curving and it might hit you and kill you. Or not kill you, but you know what I mean. It's a tough game, man. It's a tough game. And it's, it's, it's amazing because if you, and for those of you overseas that aren't familiar with baseball, if you get a hit th three times out of every 10 at-bats, meaning you're, you're only 30% successful, then you're one of the best athletes on the planet. It's, it's that hard. It's that hard, yeah. Uh, and Samir is saying, uh, many thanks for answering my, my second question, too. Oh, you're, you're welcome. You're welcome. And if I miss any questions, guys, I answer this in the order in which I receive them. Just paste it again, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Pro Music is saying, uh, hey, Chris, if India works with honesty, uh, we would have uh, suppressed the U.S. economy. Uh, but here, none is talking about economic slowdown and the joblessness. Small and medium businesses like hotels, restaurants. Yeah. Yeah, well, I know that uh, that India is on quarantine, and my, my thoughts and prayers are with all of you. And, and we're on quarantine here in in in, in California as well. Uh, our, our our the governor uh, Gavin Newsom, he's done a good thing. He's taken this seriously, and we're we're all we all have to stay home. Um, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they're not policing it here, but um, there's kind of like a social pressure to stay home here, which is a good thing, um, because like what's happening in America is. A lot of younger people were like, screw it. I'm, I can't get, I can't die from this thing anyway. And they were all going to beach parties and all this stuff. And yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's selfish. It's selfish for anybody to do that because older people can die easily. And it's so sad, but younger people are starting to get it and pass away here in America. So no, nobody's immune. Nobody's immune. And I think it's everyone's patriotic duty globally as a citizen of the world to um, do their part. Because if you're... If you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I love it, Jim. I love that. The, the, the baseball icons there, too. Yeah, yeah. Nice. I love it. Um, and next up, uh, Mahadir is saying, my question to you. Number one, if I got 5% equity of a company by investing, after one year, if the company made $200 in revenue and $100 in profits... How much will I get for that 5% equity? And, and what is what is the 15% dividend I mean? Yeah. So you'll only get money if the company intends to pay out part of the profits um, to you. 
which I think is what you're alluding to with, with dividends. So when you buy a REIT, for example, a real estate investment trust, which is like buying a stock, but for the real estate market, the government laws in many countries stipulate that 90% of the profits for that real estate investment trust company, 90% of the profits get paid out to shareholders. So you have to understand what the, what, what the, uh, what the dividend policy is for the company. So let's go through this. You own 5% of a company and they made $100 in profits. Okay. And if they had made $100 in profits and they mentioned that there is a 15% uh, dividend, so that means that the, the total dividend for the year uh, is going to be $15. And because you own 5% of that company, um, that means uh, that you're going to get 5% of $15. Uh, which is um, 75 cents, I think. Yeah, yeah, 75 cents. So that, that's how much you expect. Yeah. And usually startups don't have dividends. So um, yeah, all right. Uh, it, and the way that the dividend changes is the, the CFO and the CEO of the company has to decide to do it. And if it's a large dividend, they have to get the board um, to, uh, to approve that as well. And you own 5% of that company. That's a, that's a big percent. So you might be able to get a board seat as well. Um, and so if that's something you want to do, ask the company first and don't join that board uh, until you, you get a lawyer to review uh, the, the contract or join that board. Because what happens is as a board member in a company, if something goes bad with the company, you can get sued personally. And so what happens is lawyers create special legal contracts for people on boards uh, called D&O insurance, D&O, Director and Officer's Insurance. Make sure you get D&O insurance before joining a board so that if you get sued, you're protected. Yeah, I'm not a lawyer though. Uh, and, and I know the legal, uh, the law is different in every country. So make sure that you consult with a lawyer always, please. Thanks. Okay. And somebody's writing, our, our government doesn't care about education, health, uh, and public policy. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes you got to take matters in your own hand uh, and just stay home. You know, like, like when, my, when school was canceled for my kids, I was actually about to pull them out of school that day. Uh, and then they finally canceled it here, which was a good thing. Um, so I think blind faith in any government is, is, is not a good thing. You got to question everything, of course. But I think that governments globally are trying to do the right thing uh, by quarantining everyone. Like New Zealand, for example. Like there's basically walls are going up in, in every country. Uh, New Zealand's a little different. It's an island nation. Uh, and the, uh, the prime minister, I can't remember her name. She's 39. She's amazing. I watched a speech from her last night. She's incredible. Um, but but I, I think that governments are, are doing noble things by asking people to stay home uh, just until we like we don't know we don't know we don't know if this virus you know is is can, can live on the surface of something for more than two weeks or three weeks i should say we, we just don't know for a fact yet um we don't know how this virus is going to mutate uh and and one of the reasons uh, and i'm no doctor but we have a very good friend who's pretty close to this christine my wife um and apparently in Italy, it's, it's a slightly different virus than what we have in America. It, it actually mutated. We, we just don't know. We don't know what's going to happen yet. It's that uncertainty. You know, we, we got to be careful. We got to be careful. You know, we're, we're, we are literally all in this together. Uh, so if, if governments where you live don't take it seriously, um, decide for yourself. Um, you know, and keep, keep, your, keep your family healthy. That's number one priority. And for those of you that, that don't have a burglar alarm at home, and I don't want to be an alarmist here. I want to be a realist. But try to see if you can get, if you don't have an alarm, get an Arlo product, A-R-L-O, or, or something like that to protect your house. Okay. Um, just in case. Um, you know, the, the worst thing that can happen, I mean, the worst has already happened, but whatever, uh, is that 
the police force, you know, they, they, a lot of them get sick and they're doing a great job here. They're amazing. But what if that happens? Then maybe they bring in the, the, the army just to, to keep the peace, and peace, order and good government, as we used to call it in Canada. But what if the army gets sick? And, it, and it's, it's, it's smart to just be vigilant. And I'm going to show you a product I use. Okay? And I've got tons of cameras up everywhere from many different countries or companies. And I got a, a burglar alarm as well, and, and we're set here big time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If anybody comes close, they're, they're screwed. But I want to show you what to do. So there's a company, and there's a lot of knockoff products as well that are a lot cheaper than what I'm about to show you. Um, but, uh, oh, and by the way, don't touch your doorbell. Because our doorbell gets it get a lot of people ring it. That that could that might be the most dangerous thing to touch, whatever for obvious reasons. But but I use um, I, I have a bunch of security companies, uh, and so uh, I have a bunch of these. Um, and there, there are cheaper alternatives you, you can get as well, uh, and they work outdoors on your Wi-Fi network. You can get cell version too. Um, and uh, the battery you change every three months. I've got solar hooked up to mine here, so they're 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 always charged. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway. It's a good idea. It's a good idea to be, to be, to be careful, right? So, all right. And, and Dwight is saying, uh, hello, Chris. Hey, Dwight. Uh, my teen wants to learn about finance and expand her knowledge. Unfortunately, I'm not well versed in these subjects. Are your courses suitable for a teenager? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And we have a, a, a couple of teenagers actually on, on the call here. We have Juan David, uh, who's, um, he's 16 years old. He's taking my courses. Uh, and uh, yeah, no, absolutely. And in my MBA degree program, we actually have a, a student that's 17. Yeah, yeah, he, he's from uh, Morocco. Yeah, so absolutely, absolutely. Have her take it. Have her take my, my, uh, my, my financial analyst course or any of my courses. And if you're not happy, you get a, uh, you know, get a money back guarantee. And if you go to haroonventures.com, uh, I sell nine of my courses, nine of them, for 50 bucks. It's a special I have on. Uh, and there's a 30 day money back guarantee there as well. You got nothing to lose. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Uh, and Anthony is saying, glad to see you're well, Chris. Uh, been a while since I tuned in. Yeah. That's no, it's great. Great to have you. Great to have you. And my, my middle child, his middle name is, uh, is Anthony. And, uh, my, my brother's middle name is Anthony too. And my mom's favorite saint is St. Anthony. Actually it's Padre Pio now, but yeah, yeah. Okay, and Asmina is saying, hey, Chris, my sister thinks I have a gaming issue. Uh, in, any advice to her? Um, you mean she thinks you play games too much? Because um, I'm the wrong person to ask about that. <laughs> well, actually, one of my kids, he's been, you know, we're, we're quarantined here. He started a business. He's starting to stream video games. And he's made more than 50 bucks so far. It's amazing. He's scaling it. He's scaling it. So, no, I, 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 I think that gaming is healthy. Uh, and because it, it's, it's a way for us to, obviously within reason, you know, you can't spend, you know, a billion hours playing. I would, if I could, I love games, but, and the great thing about having kids is they, how do you get to be a kid again? Like my kids would say, dad, can you help me with this level in super Mario galaxy too? And I'm like, oh, fine. Okay. Yeah. It's fun. It's fun. But I think that gaming is how our kids socialize and, and a lot of people don't get it. And, and, and when I used to, um, when I used to invest in the software sector and internet sector, and I've met with every video game company that, that, that matters on the planet at their headquarters. Um, but when I used to go to Shanghai uh, or to, uh, to Seoul or, or Tokyo to meet with video game companies, um, I found that it was, it was quite different uh, in, in Asia, especially China, I should say. Like in China, I remember last time I met with, it was Shonda and this infrastructure company called The Nine, uh, which, which managed the entire infrastructure for World of Warcraft. Um, I met with them in China, in Shanghai, and, and I asked them, I said, at the time, I said, why is it that computer-based gaming is huge in China, but not America? And this was back then. And the answer they gave was fascinating. They said, well, up until recently, we had this one child per family policy in China. And so after dinner in America, for example, you know, you might go outside and play with your brothers and sisters. But in China, after dinner, the way that a lot of kids socialize with each other is by playing games online. It's another way to socialize. And I think that parents that don't let their kids play games, they've got to be careful because it's, it's just, it's how people socialize now. It's just how it's done. 
obviously you have to regulate it, make sure your, your kids are well-rounded and go outdoors, play basketball every now and then or whatever sport it is and do their homework and all that good stuff. But by blocking your kids from video games entirely, I think you're hurting them because people socialize a lot uh, in, the, in the younger generation by, by playing games. It just, it, it is what it is, especially now more than ever. So that, that's what I recommend explaining to your, to your sister. And if I misunderstood the question, please let me know. Thanks. All right. Let's see, we got about a, just over a half hour left here. Um, and, and by the way, if I don't answer your questions, um, just copy them uh, and then ask me next week. Yeah. Uh, and so what I do is um, the call ends at, at, at 11. Uh, and then at 11.15, I have my, my MBA degree students. We have two hours of office hours for them. Uh, and then I do a bunch of one-on-ones with, with my, my MBA degree students. Yeah. yeah. God, I love coffee. Okay. All right. Next up is Pro Music is saying banks hit hard us to get their interest in payment because they don't want to show bankruptcy. Last month, there was a private bank called Yes Bank declared bankruptcy and the government is trying to hide the facts. Yeah. 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 Transparency builds trust. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and usually banking, banking regulation around the world is, is more stringent today than it was, um, during the 2008 crisis. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's also prudent to have a little bit of cash on hand too. Not too much, but you know, just in case, just in case. And that alarm I mentioned. Okay. Uh, and Jim is saying vibe high and good things will come. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Totally. Um, like Henry Ford said, whether or not you think you can do it, you're right. You're right. Uh, or Aub Aubrey Hepburn said, um, nothing is impossible. The word I'm possible, uh, impossible says I'm possible in it. Yeah. It's great to have a positive attitude. Yeah, yeah. And Samir is saying, I watched your financial analyst video uh, and, and I fit the role of a venture capitalist after doing the test. Okay, right in section one. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. What recommendations do you have for me to be technically strong as a VC? Yeah. So I, I would, um, I only recommend doing venture capital um, later in your career after you started at least one company. And the reason is because when you're trying to win deals and, and, and get entrepreneurs to sign with you and let you invest in their companies, you know, what, one thing you can offer value wise is that you've been, you know, you, you've started companies. And so when you sit on their board, you're going to be giving them advice and it's a startup. And if you haven't started a company before, it's, it's tough for you to compete with other venture capitalists for, for deals. So what I recommend doing is start at least one company first. Uh, if you haven't already, if you have, then great. Uh, if you've already started a company, then I, I would say you got to just network like crazy. And go to my website, haroonventures.com and download my networking book for free. And that will teach you how to network because relationships are more important than product knowledge. Always, yeah. Especially in venture capital. Yeah. And, and by, by you, if you took my entire course, the, the financial analyst training course, which is the one I think you're referring to, you know more about finance than most venture capitalists do. That's right. A lot of, like when I used to work on Wall Street, when I worked in the hedge fund industry, we would create these elaborate financial models. And then I went to the venture capital industry and people didn't really do that. They did a bit of it, but not really. And the reason is, and rightly so, because you're, you're, you're betting on the entrepreneur. And that's one thing I've learned from the venture capital industry is the problem with, with, with Wall Street and with business schools in general is they spend too much time focusing on financial modeling and, and what the company does and all that stuff and not enough time focused on who's running the damn thing because the jockey is always more important than the horse. And so in venture capital, you know, quite, quite often they'll, they'll bet on the entrepreneur and less so on the business model. And they'd always rather in venture capital invest in an A management team with a B business model rather than investing in a B management team with an A business model. Why? Because these early stage companies will change materially over time. They will. And we as venture capitalists just want to know that the entrepreneur can adapt and still keep us excited about their products. And every time we meet with them before deciding to invest in a company, uh, we as venture capitalists, we think, is this person a great salesperson? Do they get me excited about the product or not? All 
All right, next one is uh, Hamanshu is saying, uh, hey, Chris, which retail business would be better to start off with, a bakery or a mobile phone business? Yeah, um, I, I would, it, it depends what kind of mobile phone business, but my, my gut would be to go with that one. Um, just because the bakery industry, the margins are razor thin and, and it's tough to compete. It's tough to compete. Yeah. Uh, but you have to share with me more details in the mobile phone business. Are you reselling phones? Um, uh, is it something software related on mobile phones? Just, just let me know and I'll, I'll humbly try to answer the question. Thanks. All right. Uh, and Jose is saying, I took Rob Percival's coding courses. Uh, thanks for, thanks for referring him, Chris. My pleasure. My pleasure. He's great. He's great. He's a machine man. He's like data from Star Trek. He's, he's, he's unbelievable, that guy. Yeah, yeah. With a personality, though. With a personality. We, we, we had a good time at, at Cambridge. I went to visit him there, yeah. All right. Um, and, and if you go through Cambridge University, um, and it's weird, man. It, it feels like you're, you're walking through a Harry Potter university or something. Um, it's different. It's different, yeah. Yeah. Um, and one thing that, that bugged me is I remember, there's no filter with me here. I remember looking at the walls of all these, in all these great halls uh, of paintings of successful people or people that went there and they're all white male. I remember that, that bothered me. Yeah. 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 But times are changing. Thank God. But they haven't changed fast enough. And even in the 1960s, um, like I remember I, I, um, I was reading Obama's book years ago, the one he made in 95. And I called my mom and I said, Mom, you're not going to believe this, but interracial marriage was illegal in 13 states uh, in the 1960s. And she said, I know, honey, we lived it. I said, what do you mean? Well, she, well my, my mom and dad, they, they met in Canada. They live in Canada. My, my mom said it was, it was harder for them as well. Um, and uh, she was walking on Young Street, which is the longest street in the world uh, in, in Toronto in the 60s. And, and somebody, she was walking with my dad and, and she said, you're... Your, your parents would be ashamed of you or, or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, my parents had the best marriage ever. All right. Okay. Um, Saloni is saying, I have an educational page uh, on Instagram uh, where I provide a lot of free content. I also have some paid eBooks and I'm planning to set up a website too. Any ideas how I can grow? So when it comes to social media, you got to make sure that you use YouTube a lot. Um, it's the most important TV channel in history. It's the only TV channel that the younger generation watches and maybe Twitch a little bit too. And it's the only gold rush in history where it costs you nothing to make the product and you get access to billions of customers immediately. So take my complete YouTube course if you want to. You got to have a YouTube strategy as well. Uh, and I teach you everything you need to know, including setting up, setting up your equipment, how to make thumbnails, everything from scratch. Um, and actually, I, I, I created it because, the course because what, one of my students, her name is Sasha Stevenson, um, and she's based in Indonesia. I never met her. I never will, probably. But on week number 10 here on, of this, uh, this weekly call, she started giving me advice on my YouTube channel. And I, I really believe that successful people in business are givers. If you give, you'll receive in the long run. It's prophetic. It's been true since the beginning of time. So I contacted her and I said, let's make a course together and split it 50-50. And uh, we made a course. And oh, and by the way, she has over 100 million views on her YouTube channel. So I learned a lot from her. But So take my complete YouTube course if, if you want to. One other thing I want to recommend to you and to anybody interested in social media, uh, I'm certainly not the, the, the authority at all. But there's this guy named Gary Vaynerchuk. Just search for Gary in the letter V like this here. And um, you go to his website. And, and he's this guy from the East Coast of the United States. And he's very confident. He rubs some people the wrong way, but he grows on you. You'll end up loving him because he's so transparent and real. But if you scroll down here, you'll see it's he's got this thing called 86 Pages of Insanity. And you click this, and it's literally 86 slides. You can click through it like this. And it'll tell you exactly how to do social media, okay, and the content pyramid, and how to repurpose content, and work smarter, not harder. So, so check that out. In terms of what social media products should you use, uh, I always recommend, and this is just me saying this, you go to the bottom of his website and you look at these logos in, in order, okay? So, and, and he got rid of method recently too, which, which I agree with, it was just whatever. Um, it, it's all about video and imagery now, not, not as much text. So 
this is Instagram, obviously YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, which I've never really, I haven't figured that one out yet. Um, I, I don't, I don't use it except to make myself look like a girl or younger or glasses or a beard. My, my kids, yeah, that's fun. LinkedIn, obviously. And this here is podcast, I believe. Yeah. 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 So, and, and audio is the operating system of the future and the future is now. So I, I would check this out uh, if you get a chance. I'll just, I'll copy and paste this for you guys if, if, if you're curious and, and you want to go there. And my dad told me from a young age, he said, Chris, only take advice from successful people. And Gary Vaynerchuk is very successful. Okay, there you go. All right. Um, and Ola Yemi is saying, hi, Chris. I just watched um, um, the career and self-development course on Udemy. Thank you for sharing the, the secrets. My, my, my pleasure. My pleasure. Thanks. I poured my heart into that one, man. Um, I, I really did. And that's why I often say you got a lifetime money back guarantee because I, I want to help. But, but I do really believe in the methodologies. Yeah, I lived it. I changed careers a lot. So, yeah. Okay. And, and then you got to follow up here saying, I'd like to ask, how do I network with people for job opportunities in this period of pandemic and no physical meeting yet? So I, I still think you can set up informational meetings the exact, way, the exact same way I, I articulated in that course. Um, but I, I think you can do it by, by saying, do you have time for a Zoom call or, or, or a Skype call? Okay, I would try that. Yeah. Most people won't do that. Hardly any people will do that. Now we'll set you aside from others. And you got to be relentless. Never give up. Like, speaking of Cambridge uh, and, and Harry Potter, so J.K. Rowling was, was rejected by 30 publishers. She failed 29 times. She didn't give a damn. She didn't give a damn. You got to be the same way when you're networking as well. You're, you're going to get a lot of people who won't answer you or, or will say no if they answer at all. Yeah, it's a numbers game. Just keep at it. I promise you it'll work. It'll work. And it's a good thing not everybody does this because then there's less competition for us. Okay, uh, and then Jim is saying, uh, when we are connected uh, to our hearts, we can face any channel. Absolutely. Uh, and then Jim's writing here, uh, FDR, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, uh, former president of the United States years ago. FDR's words were never truer. Uh, the only thing to fear is fear itself. Yeah, 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 yeah. And JFK said that once too in his speech. I loved it. I loved it. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, totally, totally. And, and, and Jim, who's one of my MBA degree students, uh, he and I lived through 9-11 um, he also lived in New York, uh, at, at the time. Um, yeah. Yeah. And the difference is like, it, it was awful, awful situation, New York then terrible, but basically we, we, we were at home for three days and we went back to work right there at ground zero. Um, just this, this virus thing is, it's so disruptive to the global economy, but it, it's good to be safe. Yeah. All right. Uh, and Gregory is saying, Chris, uh, I'm sure I'll start your online teaching course to create teaching. Awesome. Do it, man. Do it, please. It's free. Yeah. Um, and, pro, and then a pro is saying, Chris, please put uh, the link of, of books uh, in the description. Um, okay, sure. Yeah. So um, all, all you do is just go to haroonventures.com uh, and then that, that's where you get the networking book. If you're referring to something else, please, please let me know. Thanks. Or if you're referring to uh, actually a list of, of some of the books my, 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 my students have made. Yeah, for sure. Let me, uh, I'll show you this here. So uh, I'm going to do, I'll show you this. You guys can take a very, very quick uh, screen uh, snapshot of, of your screen. And because this webcast is recorded forever, you, you can pause it. But what I'll do is I'll show you these books overhead. These are my students' books and they inspire the hell out of me. Okay. So here they are here. Okay. So let me, let me put them right, right here. Okay. So t take a screen print of that, please. All right. And again, this you can always rewind the webcast as well if, if you want to. But these are some of my, my, my awesome students in their books. Yeah. And anybody can write a book. Anybody can do it. So please do it. Please do it. And when you guys publish your books, let me know because I like to buy them. Um, don't ever send me free copies of anything, please. Uh, I want to buy it uh, and I want to profile it. I want to read it too. It's cool. You guys inspire me. Okay. Um, and then Asmina wrote here, um, which reminds me, I thought about writing a book on the benefits gaming can provide the world. Yes, do that, dude. Oh my God, that'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. 
um, and maybe make it something really edgy and controversial in the title, like video games are good for your kids, something like that. And what you can do, uh, I mean, uh, what I've done with my books is you can gut it with social media. What that means is this, each chapter you paste every day on LinkedIn, okay, if you want to, or do like an audible version as well. Yeah, definitely do that. You got nothing to lose and everything to gain by doing that. Yeah. God, parents are going to hate me now. <laughs> and then Jim said, uh, I'm dating myself. I never got into gaming. Really? Even in the early 80s? You never went to an arcade? Uh, played at Galaxian or, or Galaga or, or Pac-Man yeah, um, or, or uh, um, Tron? Remember that one? Yeah. Or the Aerosmith game years ago. Yeah. Or Dragon's Lair. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then uh, Martin. Hey, Martin. Martin's saying, hi, Chris. Uh, my 15-year-old daughter, uh, Eileen uh, Benitez, wants to be an entrepreneur. Can you give, uh, give her a shout out and give her uh, some advice on being disciplined uh, in her studies? Uh, she just started uh, your course. Yeah. No, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Here's what I would say. Sometimes if you haven't learned about business and you haven't been told how to think, you're way more successful than people that have been working in business for years. I'll give you an example. Here we have the Beatles. The Beatles were in their 20s when they came up with all that awesome content. And quite often, it's much, much younger people that are creative and change the world, especially in the world of music. There's so many, you know, Taylor Swift's out there that were just, you know, much, much younger than the average, you know, musician that, that, that made a killing and did exceptionally well. Or the Justin Bieber's of the world. Or if I be global here, K-pop. I don't know any of their names, but I know K-pop's a big deal. And I am, I, I'm an old man saying K-pop, eh? That's, uh, I think that's Korean pop? Yeah. So um, I, I think that a lot of the best music, a lot of the best entrepreneurs, a lot of the most creative people in the world are very, very young uh, because they have fresh, new, exciting ideas that older people just don't have. Okay. All right. All um, right. And then give, give me one second, guys. We got a ton of questions. All right. So I, I, I'm so sorry. In about 15 or 20 minutes, I'm going to have to end the call. So if I don't answer your questions, uh, just, um, just just copy your questions for, for next week, please. Thank you. All right. Um, and I just got a, a ton of questions just hit here. So ho hold on one second. Okay. It's, it's jamming the system, but we'll be good here. If I miss questions, just paste them again. Sorry, yes. Okay. Next one is um, uh, oh, Kashik is saying thank you. You're, you're, you're most you're most welcome. Uh, Jose is saying, Chris, what do you think about the capital bailout poured into the markets? Isn't it an artificial way uh, to boost the market? Uh, the rebound we've seen and been currently looking at is just the uplifting sentiment that uh, can last some days, not years. Uh, thanks in, in advance for your answers. Yeah, 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 thanks. So the market ripped to the upside in the past couple of days. Uh, it was the biggest one-day gain for the, the, the Dow Jones, um, I think in history or maybe since the 1930s, um, and biggest percent gain too. A lot of that was actually not people buying stocks, like average investors. That was actually hedge funds covering their shorts. And so hedge funds can make money. Hedge funds are like mutual funds. And mutual funds we know are just, they, they buy stocks. And when you buy a stock, it's called, I'm long a stock. You know, go long. I'm long a stock. The opposite of, of owning a stock, meaning betting against a stock, is called shorting a stock, which means you're, 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 you're expecting the stock to go down and you make money off it. Uh, and so what happens is a, a lot of hedge funds, and they're called hedge funds because think of your backyard. You've got a hedge around your backyard protecting, protecting your backyard. That's what hedge funds do. They protect capital. They buy stocks, mean they go long, and they short stocks, mean they, they bet they're going to go down to protect capital um, in case you know, times are tough, which they are now. And whenever there's slightly positive news that comes out, hedge funds panic, and they, they get rid of their shorts. They buy back the shorts to close those positions out. 
And that's why one of the big reasons why you saw a, a big move as well. There's also a government slush fund in many countries. Okay, I'm not going to talk any more about it, but it basically means governments have a lot of money and sometimes they'll buy stocks. And what happens when um, the stock market goes up is it's almost like it's a stimulus being injected into the market and it costs the government nothing. So I, I think if the market goes up a lot, people will, from a sentiment perspective, feel a little bit better about their net worth if people own stocks, which most people do, especially in their retirement fund. So yeah, that, that's why I have to say about it. it. It is artificial, but it is sentiment driven as well. Uh, and perception becomes reality a lot of times uh, when, it, when people think about, you know, the outlook for the future. You know, if people perceive that it's going to be great or, or if Trump says uh, we're going to see pent up demand and a massive rebound after this is all done, if people start believing that and feeling comfortable about that, um, then that creates positive sentiment, which makes the market go up, which costs the government nothing, which helps the economy because everybody feels richer and everybody spends more. And a lot of people don't realize this, but two thirds of the U.S. economy is based on consumer spending. It's not big business. So, and, and, and about one third of the global economy about is the U.S. economy. And two thirds of that is consumer spending. Uh, and so when politicians in America come out and, and start saying more upbeat things, um, I, I don't think it hurts anybody. I, I think what hurts us is if we don't take the, the coronavirus seriously. However, it, if, if Trump talks a game about how things are going to look a lot better longer term, I'm happy he's doing that because it, it it's creating you know, it's creating hope. Even if you don't completely believe it yourself, there's nothing wrong with being optimistic. Nothing wrong, you know. I, I I'm and, and I'm happy that uh, that that you know Cuomo and and, and Newsom, the governors of, uh, of of New York State and California State, respectively. I'm happy that they they're taking this very seriously, uh, and you know we're we're all quarantined from home now. I'm happy that happened. It's a smart thing to do. And some people say Trump should be, react uh, more quickly, whatever. Um, and I agree too. However, if he talks up a big game about how things are going to, America's economy is going to roar to the upside after this is done, um, good for him. Good for him. There's nothing wrong with, with spreading optimism longer term, longer term. Yeah, we're all in this together. But sentiment and consumer sentiment has a lot to do with the stock market. That's why a, a lot of people will analyze uh, United States consumer sentiment statistics closely because two thirds of the US economy is consumer spending. And one third of the world's economy roughly is the United States. And then Jim is saying, can I show my, my latest uh, oil slide deck here if you want? Actually, you know what, uh, Jim, because I want to give you a lot more time. Um, so why don't we do it? Um, so this call will end around 11 o'clock and then the MBA office hours starts at uh, 11.15. I will like post your link right away and I'll answer yours first um, uh, before, before anybody else. Okay? Uh, and, and we'll go through Zoom immediately with you. We'll, we'll do a live Zoom call. Um, so and, and that way I can spend a lot more time with you. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Thanks. All right. Um, and then uh, Pro Music is saying Amazon cancels orders uh, until the till the fifth of April. Does it affect uh, um, the stock price? Yeah, I, I don't know what that means. It's so interesting because last night actually I was trying to buy. Uh, oh, that probably explains it. I, I was trying to buy a green screen product last night from Amazon. And, and, and I filtered and I said only Amazon Prime. And a lot of them actually, it said no delivery until, until April. Maybe that's why. I, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, it, it depends where you live in terms of getting Uber Eats or, or, or delivery to you as well. Uh, like, for example, if you want to get food delivered to your house in the Pacific Northwest um, in Washington State, it, sometimes you have to wait five days. It, it, it's rough. It's rough. And a lot of people have been hoarding and I don't think that's a patriotic thing to do, hoard. I think a little bit of hoarding with, you know, with, with stuff like this 
you know, getting it for yourself is fine. And, and here, actually, um, before the crisis got nutty here, a lot of people that are from China that live here in the Bay Area, they bought a lot of this stuff and they were sending it home to their families and stuff, which is the right call. Yeah. But I think hoarding other stuff is, is today, now, is, is not patriotic. Yeah. Because we're all in this together. All right, Solly in the house. How are you, bud? Solly lives in Lithuania. He's one of our MBA degree students, as is Mercy. Mercy, glad to have you. Mercy is from um, Victoria, uh, which is a wonderful city uh, on, on the West Coast in, in Canada, in British Columbia. Uh, and, and Mercy um, uh, is really into yoga, uh, and she's been doing a great job networking. Uh, and she's met recently with uh, the folks at CGI, which is like Accenture, but the Canadian version. Yeah. And Mercy is writing, good morning, Chris. Uh, I'm glad to be here. Um, ha likewise, thank you. How do you see the economy changing once we emerge uh, from the COVID uh, situation? So I, I think what's going to happen is it, it, it will be sort of business as usual, but it's going to take a lot longer for people to trust. Um, trust going to places where there's lots of people. So I think restaurants will be adversely impacted. It will be slow for them for a number of years. I think the movie industry is going to change dramatically, like movie theaters and stuff. And I wouldn't be surprised if, if uh, entertainment companies started launching um, movies online uh, directly instead of the theater and bypass the theater. And it's like pay-per-view for WWE or whatever it is, Ultimate Fighting People, watch that crazy stuff. So I, I think we're going to see movie theaters go into secular decline. And that will be offset by a pickup in, 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 in on-demand. Um, like... The James Bond movie. It's killing me because Daniel Craig is awesome. Uh, Casino Royale is the best Bond movie ever. The, the new one, the newer one in 06. But his latest James Bond movie has been delayed for like eight or nine months. They're, they're ready to release it. They pulled it. But I think everything is going to go direct to online at, at some point. So that industry will change a lot. I think sporting events will change as well. You know, I, I think that Major League Baseball, you know, football overseas, football here, whatever, basketball, um, I, I don't think many people are going to go to games. Uh, not as many people as, as, as did in the past. I, I think also distance learning is going to pick up. And remote working as well is going to pick up a lot. And companies like Zoom are going to prosper tremendously from this. Um, and that's not a bad thing because this means that you'll be able to work from anywhere in the world and spend more time with family and waste less time traveling, uh, which, which has an environmental and an economic benefit to all of us too uh, in the long run. In the long run, yeah. Uh, but, but I think when, when, when governments say it's now safe to, to travel, oh, the airlines as well, they'll, they'll, they'll be hit. People will not be traveling on in airlines or Greyhound buses or whatever it is. Um, yeah. But I think what happens is when, when, when governments around the world say, okay, it's now safe to go outdoors again uh, when this nuclear winter, so to speak, is over, I don't think people will trust them for a while. And, and some people never will. Um, so I, I don't think things will be as great as they've been for restaurant businesses uh, or, or sporting events ever again. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and the whole, yeah, yeah, that, that's what I think. But, but I do think that people are going to be much more productive after all this is over because they know how to work uh, from home. You know, I, I think it's a wonderful thing from a family perspective as well. I, I'm optimistic w w that, you know, things will be great uh, in the long run. Um, and, Look at how much technology has progressed. Like, imagine going through this without the internet. Like, like try doing this for fun. I did this to my kids. This is mean, but I'm going to say it anyway. Um, you know, I, I would give my kids updates and everything. They're like, oh, that's awful. And I said, and, um, and the government is actually shutting down uh, YouTube and the internet. And they went crazy. They're like, no, that's not fair. That is ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I let that go for a couple of minutes and I said, just kidding. Yeah, but it was fun. That's called dad humor. Yeah. But I'm optimistic. Cause I'll, I'll, like, think about all the wonderful technology we have. Um, and think about, like, your kids' jobs have not been invented yet. Think about that. Your job in five years, there's a good chance it has not been invented yet either. So I, I, I think you can reinvent yourself so many different ways by leveraging online. Um, and distrib distributing uh, your, your services online. Like, don't make physical products because inventory can destroy and all that stuff. But I, I'm, I'm, I'm optimistic. I'm optimistic that when we come out of this thing, uh, we're all going to be, you know, much more productive with less and working from home as well. 
which is not a bad thing. Not a bad thing. Yeah. So anyway, those, those are my humble thoughts. All right. And uh, uh, Gregory is saying, uh, Chris, Five Guys Hamburgers. Dude, I've had that. It's so good. I feel like death after I eat it, but I love it. It's great. It's great. And for those of you not familiar with it, uh, Five Guys is uh, a restaurant chain started here in America by Five Guys. <laughs> uh, and it's, it's good. And, and you can walk in and while you're waiting for your order, you can eat peanuts and drop the shells. It's just their trademark, whatever, uh, on the floor. Uh, I like their fries better than, than their hamburgers, uh, but it, uh, it is good. But I do feel like death afterwards. And so whenever I think of eating food like that, I always think to myself, kind of like I think with stocks, every time I invest in a stock, I'll think risk reward. You know, the risk is here. The reward hopefully is up here and the risk minus the reward is positive. The same thing when it comes to five guys. Every time I want to have a, a unhealthy food, I think to myself risk reward or, or pain and pleasure. You know, which, and, and Tony Robbins came up with pain and pleasure, not me. And what that means is this. If you're at Five Guys or you want to go there, you think to yourself, if I eat this hamburger and these fries, I'll feel this much pleasure. But I'll also feel this much pain longer term because I'll gain weight. Uh, I'll, I'll feel tired. It's not good for you, et cetera. So boil down everything to pain and pleasure or, or risk reward, as I call it. Yeah. Benny saying, uh, hi, Chris. Good morning. Good morning to you as well. Uh, and then uh, uh, Kevin is writing, uh, currently doing your MBA in one course. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. And we saw a big spike actually in, in, in Egypt um, where I got um, 70,000 students in the past um, couple of weeks. It's been good. Oh, I gave away tons of coupons. So almost every single one of those free coupon. Yeah. Because I, I do worry about Egypt. Uh, and my, dad, my dad's uh, Egyptian. I'm half Egyptian. I worry about Egypt because Everybody lives close to each other there because they all live on the Nile. It's the Fertile Crescent, so to speak, or whatever. Uh, there's a lot of desert. Uh, and, and I worry about places like that when it comes to, to COVID-19. Uh, and that's one of the many reasons why I made all my courses free for, for a while there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Um, next up is, um, are you familiar uh, with uh, investing in distressed debt. Uh, if you do, can you please tell me more about it? Many thanks. Yeah. So I, I, don't, I don't think anybody should. So the, the way it works for, for those of you that are, are, are new to the, the bond markets is bonds is like debt. Um, it's, it's like a loan to, to a government or to a, a, a company. So I've got a, a couple of examples here. So I've got an example here. This is a, a bond debt for the Wall Street, for the, uh, uh, the Disney Corporation. Um, and basically, this is what um, Disney used. And maybe I'll switch camera angles over here. Hold on a second. This, this here is, is, this is how Disney built Euro Disney in 1982. They issued bonds, which is debt. And that's why they call it coupon bonds, because you can clip off little coupons here. It's just basically a loan. Uh, and, and big governments do it as well. And, and so this is one of my favorite exhibits I have. Um, so this here is, um, it, this is international, dude. So this is in pounds sterling. It's written in French and it's for the uh, Egyptian government uh, from the late 1800s, early 1900s uh, to, 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 to raise money for, for, um, for, for a dam. Uh, and then on the back here, you can see the, the, the payment schedule, your, your return on investment. Um, so um, that's, that's what debt is. Now, whenever you invest in debt, meaning bonds, there's a rating system. And the rating system goes like this. It's easy to remember. It goes AAA, which is the best. It's AAA. Then it goes AA. Then it goes A. And anything below that, don't invest. Because that's, they used to call it junk bonds, but people now call it high yield. Um, yeah, just be careful. Be careful um, and do your thorough research. Um, I, I prefer to only invest in AAA-based uh, securities. Um, so j just be really, really careful because even if you invest in government bonds, you can still lose all your money. Not the federal government, like in, in, in America, for example, but municipal bonds. Like there's a region in Southern California uh, called uh, OC, which is uh, Orange County. And uh, Orange County um, declared bankruptcy years ago. And as a result, people that invested in municipal bonds 
for the municipality of Orange County. They lost all their money. And that's one of the reasons why municipal bonds have better yields, because it's more risk. And a lot of times municipal bonds, or as people call it munis, uh, you can write off the tax as well, just as a sweetener to incentivize you uh, to, uh, to, to help invest in the infrastructure of, of, um, of where you live. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And, and really risky projects, a lot of times are financed with, with really risky bonds or high yield bonds, which have ratings way below A. Um, for example, Las Vegas, like who the hell would come up with a crazy idea to go to the middle of the desert and create eight of the biggest hotels in the world on the Las on the Las Vegas Strip. It's crazy. Now, Macau, of course, in south, south coast of China has, um, I, I gotta, we gotta wrap up this call in a second. Um, you know, Macau is taking a lot of share. But the way that they financed Las Vegas and all those crazy hotels was through junk bonds. Yeah. And that's an industry that was pioneered by, by Michael Milken. Um, who broke the law, spent time in jail. Now he's an incredible humanitarian, uh, and, and I respect him a lot. Okay. Um, next up, uh, West Hun is saying, Chris, can you please uh, make available in Mobi EPUB version for e-readers Kindle, the network can get customers a job? It is, it is. It's, 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 it's available for, for Kindle users, I think. It should be online. If not, don't, actually don't, no, don't buy it, please. Don't buy it, though. Because you can get it for free from my website. You can download it in PDF format from my website, uh, which you can use on most readers. Yeah. Himanshu is saying, uh, Chris, India is doing well. Police officers are only giving third degree to people who are not ready to listen. So it's fine. Uh, they are concerned for us only. Good. Good. Glad, glad to hear. Glad to hear. Um, and then uh, Juan David uh, in Chicago is saying, I'm hearing back from most of my colleges today. Oh, that's right, for application. Um, and your essays were kick-ass, by the way. Uh, I'm hoping to, uh, to hear the good news. And thank you for having helped me uh, and given me advice on my essay. Grateful for that. Thanks. You're, you're most welcome. Let me know the good news, please, because um, I, I want to celebrate with you here, virtually. Double high five. Yeah. Uh, and Mercy is saying, in, in Canada, the Army is getting ready to get involved uh, in the army is already deployed. Uh, they'll be handing out food. Good, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that's the first time I've ever heard of the army being brought out in Canada since the early 1970s with the FLQ crisis when Quebec wanted to separate and this guy Pierre Laporte was, was, was murdered um, and there were tanks in the streets in Montreal. Wow. We live in interesting times. Manchu is saying, I, I don't want to comment in here. Um, there are people in India who don't, um, who don't listen to police or follow the law and the order. Uh, it, it's good medicine for, for those people. Uh, otherwise, India is doing uh, very well. Great to hear. Okay. We are fighting. Uh, it, it's a big time crisis. Everybody is helping the poor people here in India. I love it. I love it. And I, uh, I'll never forget my, uh, my, my first trip to India. Um, there, there was a, this school that sent me to do presentations there. Uh, while I was working in venture capital, it's fun. Um, it's called the Halt International School of Business. And I flew into Mumbai and, and Delhi as well. Uh, and I gave presentations. But Mumbai, Mumbai changed me. So Mumbai is, um, and I didn't realize that was, it used to be called Bombay. I didn't, I didn't know that. Uh, but, but Mumbai, there's a lot of wealthy people there. But there's also over 20 million people living in the slums. And, and when I drove from the, or the car picked me up from the airport to go to my hotel, we drove through the slums and that changed me because never in my life have I seen so many people with nothing so happy. When you got nothing, you got nothing to lose. I don't know. Like it really, really changed me. It really changed me, uh, that trip. Uh, and, and separately, I, I, I advise that anybody who's not that happy right now, I want you to, to, to read a book by the Dalai Lama called The Art of Happiness. And the Dalai Lama... It's amazing. He says the problem with Western society is we spend uh, our, our entire lives sacrificing our health in order to make money. And then at the end of our lives, we sacrifice all of our money to maintain our health. And then we look back and we realize we never really lived to begin with. 
and embedding is saying, how long does it take to complete uh, your MBA program? So it takes, a, it, I, I, it takes a minimum of a year. So I've, I've got a couple different versions uh, and um, I'll actually show you now because I, I did some changes. Um, so there, there's a couple versions of, of the program, which um, I decided we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead with soon and we're working hard on this. So go here to the MBA program here. Uh, and I'm just updating this right now. Um, so this is pretty new. So there's, there's three options. So th the first option is this. There's a $499 version. It's called a silver package. And yeah, yeah, the, of course there'll be, there'll be um, scholarships. Um, let me see if we're still recording, good. Um, and, and this is an on-demand version, okay? And you can complete this in less than one year. Uh, and this is gonna start on April 15th of, of, of this year, okay? So check back here for more details as we get closer. We're just doing the planning now. Then there is a $999 gold package, okay? Uh, and that's everything you get here in the silver package, but you can also ask me questions during during class. And we'll, there's, I spend hours and hours every day answering questions for, for students. Then there's the $14.99 platinum package, uh, which is the same thing you get here and here, but you get a lot of one-on-ones uh, as well. And there's a 30-day 100% money back guarantee and a lot of employers will reimburse you if you ask them. And you can read all this stuff here. If you if you take a bunch of my Udemy courses, you can get more than 50% off and th th that sort of thing, whatever. So, um, and if you have more questions, email admissions at haroonventures.com. Um, but uh, hopefully that, that, that's helpful. And, and as I have more updates, um, as I plan this stuff, which is fun, uh, I'll, I'll provide with more details. Yeah. Uh, and I want to thoroughly, thoroughly thank, um, or sincerely thank everybody in my, my current MBA degree program for taking a, a chance on me. Uh, we have a, uh, we had about 160 students and two of them asked for their money back um, within 30 days. And I was happy to give it to them. Yeah. But they're great. They're great. Yeah. We got a good class. All right. Um, and Jose is saying, uh, Chris, technically the glass is always full. Oh, I love it. Let's say you have, <laughs> oh, I love it. Half of it is, is H2O, which is water. Uh, the other half is air, 78% of which is nitrogen. It, you, coming from, used to work in the, the energy business, I know that. 21% uh, oxygen, 1% argon, and the other 1% uh, noble gases. So yes, it's always full. Dude, I fucking love that. Nice, dude. Nice. I love it. I love it. Yeah. And Himanshu is saying, uh, this is my, my radical free uh, drink. It is. It is. Oh, God, we got to go in a minute. Um, all right. Give me one second. Uh, and for my, my MBA degree students, I'm going to show you what we got here. I, I, all of you, whatever. Uh, so I've got this. And we're going to use this for the... Uh, 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 the, the one-on-ones and I just got it here. So, so give me one second. Yeah. 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 And, 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 and I'll show you how this works actually. So this is the first time I've done it. Uh, there's no glare. It actually looks like a picture in per picture, which is pretty cool. Um, but, um, I, I want to show you guys how you can, you can set this thing up. So let me get on my, my, my wi network here. Turn Wi-Fi on or Wi-Fi on as my, 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 my son, Matthew calls it. Daddy, we need Wi-Fi. Yeah. Um, and, and what I can do is I can control it uh, remotely right right here, right? It's just IP based. So um, what, what we're going to do actually is um, for my students with the, with the 20 minute uh, one on ones, um, I, I'm going to give you 20 minutes here. Right. Uh, and so right now we've got um, let's just do a, th a three minute timer for this uh, and then we'll, we'll, we'll start. So give me one second. M3, three minutes. And then we'll go, this is new for me, folks. Play. Good. All right. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll, we'll end this call uh, in, 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 in three minutes because um, I got to do the MBA degree student office hours. All right. Uh, and then uh, Gregory's saying, Chris, have you seen the, uh, the, the Jimmy Fallon show from, from home? Uh, I, I've not yet. I've not yet, but I'll check it out because I, I like him a lot, actually. He's done well. He's real. He's real. Broke my heart. He was talking about his mom, how his mom passed away. And growing up, he'd always hold his mom's hand. And she'd always squeeze three times to say, I love you. Uh, and so uh, I saw him talk about that the other day. God, he broke down. Yeah. Um, 
And Jim is saying, personal power is what it's all about. Uh, love your, your, your book concept. Oh, that's great. Eric did a great job with that one. Next up is Smarty6, who's saying, hi, Chris, I'm Martin, the son of Julian. Oh, dude, awesome. Okay, guys, so uh, Julian is one of my awesome MBA degree program students. He's Bulgarian, uh, but he lives uh, in Germany right now. He works in the auto parts industry. And his son, uh, Martin, is creating uh, this unbelievable hoodie product that I think is going to go vi viral. It's it's black and yellow. And it's, it's a cool bear, and it's called Grizzly or something. I can't wait to get it. I'm going to wear it on the air, and I'm going to buy it for my kids as well. And yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, hi, Chris, it's Martin, the son of Julian. I have a question. If you're a YouTuber and someone downloads your video uh, with YouTube Premium, do you get any money for that? Thank you. No, you don't. You don't. Yeah. And a lot of people will, will download videos uh, using different software products, right? And so I'll, I'll show you some of them, right? Uh, and I just do this for my, my stuff. So you can use 4K Downloader uh, or you can use uh, Video Proc. Uh, and, and this one here is my favorite. And all you do is you just copy the URL and then you paste it here and then it'll, it'll automatically download for you, right? So I'll show you how this works. But no, I don't, I don't get money for that. So if, if I were to go here uh, and um, copy this link, and by the way, th this link looks like, like this here, right? So this is just the some welcome message I made. But I copy the, this link here um, and then I go over here and then what you can do is you can add video, you can paste and analyze. Um, and then what it'll do is, is it'll download it. Yeah, it, it works for, for most videos. Um, and so I can download that file. Uh, this one here is um, 355 megs, download now. So anyway, it, it's, it's downloading here um, and it uh, should be done in a couple seconds. That, that, that's how you can do that. Uh, but I don't get compensated for that at all though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, but thanks for the question, I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then Carolyn is right. Thank you. Um, I'll get that. I love networking. Huge thanks. Thanks. Oh, you're, you're most welcome. You're, mo you're most welcome. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so we are, um, we are done with, with the call. Uh, thank you, everybody, for your time. Um, God bless you all and stay safe. If you subscribe to my, 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 my vlog and I put out a video every day, I'll, I'll see you mañana, which means tomorrow in Spanish. Uh, otherwise, if, if you're my MBA degree students, uh, we'll start the call in a couple of minutes, uh, the MBA office hours. Um, and all of you, God bless you. Have a great weekend. And I'll see you next Thursday and every Thursday forever at 8 a.m. San Francisco time. Thanks, everybody. And, and God bless you all. Thanks.